Did you know Goldenrod makes an excellent tea? <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Aaron. Me. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to Tomic's. <laughs> veteran of the comic book industry for 30 years of a, a writer of an artist and uh this sucks Boom. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. This is Aaron Live. I am Lopez. And uh, as you see on the screen, it says Lopez and wife. Wife is not going to make it. Her uh, lower back's bothering her. She's been up today and said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I got to I gotta go lay down. The back's killing me. I said, all right. It's cool. Even though I already typed in Lopez and wife on the, on the little card there. So it's just me, but you know what? Me is going to be enough, I think. Uh, but I also have a special guest today. Uh, Billy Tucci, the Italian Scottish Irishman, will be here. Uh, I'm sure telling us many stories of the old country and uh, plugging his new project, uh, C, uh, uh, She uh, Hakasutu or something like that. We'll find out exactly what that is when he uh, gets here. But that won't be for a few minutes yet. Do you ever have performance anxiety. Not like that. I mean, you know, like you get about to go on stage, about to do a program and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't because I don't care enough. No, that's not true. I care so deeply that I spend hours prepping for this show. And so even if I'm not ready, I'm ready. Uh, welcome everybody. It is um, June 11th. June 11th. God, can you guys believe it is the sixth month of 2023 already. We are halfway through this year. I remember before I was, there was like these, there's like these pinnacles in your life, right? It's like when you're a kid, you're like, you can't wait to be 16 because then you can drive, right? So it takes like forever to get from grade school up to you're a sophomore in high school and you're 16, you finally get your driver's test. And then it's like, you're 16 and you say, oh, I can't wait to 18 because then I can vote and then I'm an adult. And so, you, you know, those last two years of high school, they take forever. And then finally, you're 18. And you're like, man, just wait. When I'm 21, then I can drink. I can do whatever I want. And then it's three more years of waiting. And, you know, and then you're, you finally make it to 21. And then, of course, it's 30. And then it's 40. And then it's like, dear Lord in heaven, don't let me turn 50. And then before you know it, you're 50. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, don't let me turn 60. And then before you know it. It's knocking on the door. It's funny how that works, right? It's just like so slow. And then it's like, no, slow down. And it speeds up. But such is, uh, such is the hand that we're dealt. Uh, so we'll just uh, do our best to deal with it. At least I will. As you can tell, I'm having a little bit of a midlife crisis that started when I turned 30 and hasn't stopped since. Anyway, let's see who's here to uh, commiserate with me today. Uh, leg kick is here because, of course, leg kick is almost always here. 
Eric the Guapo. Now look at this. We Eric shows up sometimes, sometimes he doesn't. He says, don't tell Aaron I was in here. Well, now I know. Now I know. So I know you're lurking back there. Um, Stippling Vaughn says, hope Shelly and Debbie are on. Disaster for the guys, but a win for the chat. I don't know how to take that, but because I'm hypersensitive, I'm going to take it badly. And then right out of the gate, there's violence. Okay. Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, Holder, 6480. Oh, wait. Stippling Vaughn says, it's okay to lurk, Eric. I think I just said that. Hmm. Lurking. Eric the Lurker. Hmm. Nighthawk Warrior Comics is here. Uh, Bill Maxwell, of course. Randy Howell, all the way from Canada, has joined us. Humphrey Bear is here. Uh, Nosferatu Zod. He says, I always back Aaron and Billy. And that's the proper order, too. Me first, and then Billy. But I, we both appreciate it. 40% uh, Zed is here. Mark Pengren is here. Uh, Wiley Draws has joined us. How about that? Um, he lets everybody know he's here so we can start. Well, we've started. Um, Citizen Ronan, of course, is uh, here. Uh, Marcus Killigrew, a man of much comic book knowledge and pop culture, is here. Um, oh, the Geek Easy is here. Uh, let's see who uh, H is for heretics. Says hail Shelley, hail Aaron, chat, and hail Mr. Otucci, and hail Debbie if she's here too. Uh, Mr. Monkey Boy, nineteen sixty nine. Um, ready for uh, Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> okay. Sequential Treasures is uh, here. Uh, yeah, I got the message you uh, left me on the phone. Sequential, I will uh, try and get back with you this evening. So, because um, we have a show coming up called Comic Art Convo, uh, it'll be early this week. This collar on this shirt is history, isn't it? It's time to toss it. Isn't there like a commercial where a guy shows up on a date with some girl and his collar is just ragged and she's like, Oh, nice shirt. And he's like, oops. So I'm kind of feeling like maybe that's what's going on here. Uh, anyway, Comic Art Convo. We're doing it early because uh, James is going to be at a con. I think the Washington State Summer Con on the last weekend, last Saturday of the month, which we normally do the show. So we're doing it this Saturday. So mark that on your calendars. Four o'clock Saturday. We'll be talking about uh, movies and uh, action adventure movies, I think, to be specific. Okay. Let's see here. Um Humphrey Bear wants to know if I'm drawing Muppets today. I am not, but I have been on a uh, kick drawing cereal box or, you know, cold cereal icons, and I'm not done with that yet. I've got an idea for Booberry, and that's coming up next. But we'll actually, we'll visit those in a few minutes. Uh, Geek Easy, of course, saying Aaron is a Muppet. That cannot be proven. Um, Marcus Kilroy says, the superiors, the world's greatest heroes, bottle evil variants of it. Ooh, he's a... Uh, Marcus is out there. You know, you give that guy a wrench and he plugs everybody. I think that's awesome. Thank you for doing that, Marcus. Everybody else that does. It. I know a lot of you guys post our uh, links in the chats to all these different programs, and we really appreciate it. Uh, Repairman Jack is here. Um, hmm, who am I? Did I miss anybody? Prater7, Rudy Jade90, Robert Romano. How about that? One of the smartest guys I know. Robert Romano's in the chat. How about that? Um, Geek Avenger is here. I should get to a point where I say Geek Avenger is here because Geek Avenger is always here. Um, like I used to do with Leg Kick, but then he missed one show and blew the whole thing. Christina Lynn, of course, our uh, resident um, freelance editor and proofreader. She worked on Wraith of God. She'll be working on Blood Hunters as well. She's already done a couple of the trading cards for me. Proofread the back, you know, because there's information on the back of the card. Um, so she'll be working on that book uh, very shortly, actually, as I'm getting close to uh, completion on that. Um, let's see who else is there. Uh, J G G J A is here. Thanks for joining us. Jefferson Roswell, all the way from area 54, 52, 53. One of those. Um, I don't know which one it is in Roswell, but there is. Is it area 54 or is it area 52? Okay, let's see. Um, I think uh, Devil Flyer Momentum. There he is. Hey, Aaron. Hey, you know, Devil Flyer Momentum has his uh, capital uh, lock on his keyboard locked in because he always does everything in capitals. He must be very excited. Um, I think Devil Flyer wants me to come on his show, and I think I'm going to do that. I owe him. I got to set up a time. This last couple of weeks have been crazy, hectic, and um, of course, 
I'm sure the next weeks will be just as hectic, uh, but we'll figure it out. Um, oh, here we go. The introspectum M. Introspectum. The introspectum. Hmm. It's been tested scientifically that the perception of time passing does speed up as you get older. I think it's something like by the time one is 70, the perception is like three times faster. Great. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so basically what he's saying is I'll be dead tomorrow from old age. So I better get to work. Uh, let's see. Did do anybody else in there that needs a shout out? Mr. Solomon is here. Tark's nine all the way from Canada, just like Randy Howell. Uh, Chris. Maya Rama. I always, dang it. I always struggle with your name, Chris. I had it and then I, uh, Chris Majorana. Majorana. That's got to be right, right? Or is it Majorana? Majorana, Majorana. Let's call the whole thing off. Okay. Um, there was a Vic 10 Acres. Is that the regular Vic with just a new name change? Um, no, that's good old Vic. Aaron, when did you review Jay Anna Claytow's art? Did I? Are you asking me when I'm going to? Sheeple Hunter is here. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Now we got an argument. Studies of, uh, Sheeple Hunter says, studies of subjective perception aren't actual scientific studies. Well, actually, how could they be, right? Um, but, you know, as much, it's kind of like the uh, Ghostbusters, right? To Bill Murray. He was doing uh, his own little scientific test there at the beginning of the movie. Um, er Randy's right. Share the link on social media because I have plenty of cannonballs and I'm willing to shoot them at just about anybody. Um, well, Christina Lynn, of course, if cereal is called cold cereal, isn't that what you guys called it when you were kids? That's what we called it was cold cereal because hot cereal would be like oatmeal or cream of wheat or something of that nature, right? That you prepare hot, you don't eat it cold. So that's kind of the idea. I mean, it's all room temperature cereal until you do something with it. But I think that's uh, that's where that came from. Uh, Justin Side is here. Uh, now this is interesting. He says, hey, he's referring to me, of course, a serial cartoonist drawing serial cartoons. Interesting, I like that. Uh, Geek Avengers, $2, thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. We're talking about visiting at SummerCon, we're talking about visiting at SummerCon in 2023. Um, visiting with uh, Sequential, I assume, because I'm not going to be there. Um, and let's skip Edwards. He says, I'm here too, and I just saw that you were. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Vic Tenacre says, yes, it's me. Vic, I can tell by your questions and your statements. It doesn't take long for me to figure out that it's you. Um, then let's see. Kevin Wolf is here. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, don't. Okay. He's obviously, and I would be too. I'd be upset if I wasn't going there. Uh, but um, now I'm not going to make it this year. Uh, maybe next year, you know, every other year kind of thing. Uh, next show I'm doing is San Diego. And yeah, that may be the last show I ever do. <laughs> We shall see. Uh, actually, no, that's not true because I'm going to be at Bedrock City is doing their first ever sponsored uh, con down in uh, Houston in October. And I will be there for that as well. Uh, Red Wizard is there. Hey, old Aaron, he says. Hey, Red Wizard. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I'd like to invite all of you. Oh, there's Jeff Potts. Hey, Jeff. Uh, I would invite all of you to hit the like and subscribe if you have not. Ring the bell for notifications and, you know, leave a happy comment if you like. But um yeah, in fact, I have developed a uh, surefire way um, to get my message across here, uh, as we like to call it, public service announcement about liking and subscribing to this channel. Oh. Ah, I was a little late on the Frankenstein there. But anyway, uh, you know, I greatly appreciate it when you guys do that. It helps to grow the channel and all that kind of stuff. So close to 3,000 subs. I've got to get to 3,000 subs so I can tell everyone I know that I have 3,000 subs and you can be a part of that. So uh, join the clan, if you will. It's free. There's nothing better than free. Um, speaking of free, let's take a free look at what Bernie Wrightson has to offer us today.
There it is. That's uh, That was from a fanzine from 1971 called Imagination. There was a little story in there that writes and did that, of course, was the splash page. I thought it was kind of apropos to have a frog on there or a mutant frog playing yo-yo with a dude's head. Uh, so that's 1971. So that's just just barely outside what I consider uh, the the beginning of Wrightson's really, really great stuff, which I consider 1972 Swamp Thing. But that's right there, right there knocking on the door. So that made the cut. Um, so you guys might have noticed this is episode um, 89 of uh, the Wrightson of the day. When we get to 100, we're doing an all Wrightson show. Should be a blast. At least I think it should. Um, oh, look at this. Vic says, Dan Fraga said to y'all, you remember that guy we looked at, Jay Anacleto, Anceletto? There is some things we need to dissect and reveal. Hmm, catch if you will. Uh, I vaguely remember that, but I can't remember what Dan was getting at. And I don't know if we talked about it in the green room afterward. I mean, I know who the guy is, uh, but we have not that I'm aware of dissected uh, this this fellow's art yet. Um, I see that uh, Mr. Touche is in the green room. I'm going to bring him in in a minute. In just one minute, Billy. Don't get anxious. Uh, because I see he's eating and I want to eat as well. And so um, let's do this. While I'm looking for my little, uh, there it is. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. There it is. And I am uh, dark chocolate covered almonds, which makes them healthy. If it was milk chocolate, it'd be bad for me. But because it's dark chocolate, it's actually like taking vitamins. So I'm very excited to kind of munch on these a little bit uh, because one thing we like to do around here is break the rules of broadcasting, which says never eat on camera and certainly never eat nuts on camera. Well, screw the rules of broadcasting. I'm eating. And here's another guy who's eating right now. So let's bring him on. Some say he's their favorite Italian. Some people say he's their favorite Scotsman. I've heard a few people say, if I had to pick an Irishman to hang out with, it would be this guy right now. He's the creator of She. He is, of course, my professional brother, teen sensation. Billy Tucci. Lopez. Hey, Billy, how you doing? What's up, brother? I left my bell is all, all at the other table. Oh, my gosh. Get it in back you, in real quick. You did not come prepared. What are you eating first? I'm eating. Stop and shop monster mix, trail mix. Okay. Well, this is kind of like, this is part of the trail mix. It's a chocolate-covered almond. So, yeah, I go like get your dinner. Yeah, I like I'm the, I like your the, belt. Uh, I like the dark chocolate. Look at how nice it is outside Billy's house. Look at those trees out there. You want to see if there's any birds nesting back there? Hmm? Oh, you, you hear birds and stuff? Well, no, I just, it looks nice outside your, your window or your door, yeah. screen door there. Oh, it's a gorgeous day. Oh, let me do Teen Sensation. Forgot. Now I'm teen there you go. All right. Now, before we get to your campaign, mm. I've asked you this question before, but I'm going to ask you again. Is this a total chill? Like we're just chilling like that? Sure. I like, I like what do you want to do? I've got some stuff to run later. You know, we've got that I'll get your commentary on. But uh, mostly this is about let's talk about Billy. Let's talk about his campaign and do a few fun things along the way. So it's about as chill as it gets. Um, so you've been in, you know, making money in comics for about, what, 30 years? Oh. 29 years, almost 30 years. Next March, it'll be our 30th anniversary. Okay. And yet, you know the least amount of comics from about comics than anybody I've ever met. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. Close. So how how did you give us the uh give us the uh the the reader's digest version of how how did a guy who knows very little about comics get into comics full time? I mean, what was the appeal? How did it work out? Oh, that's a good question, Aaron. My, when I was a kid, I, I was into comics, a little kid. And I said this before on the bros that once I started getting, you know, remember like when we're all kids in junior high, like elementary school um, and, and everyone's kind of, remember when we were kindergartners, first grade, second grade, everyone kind of draws the same. Yeah. And then some of us, you know, who have a, a more pro proclivity for it, I guess, mm -hmm. we start moving up like this, you know, 
come uh, junior high, um, you know, I start getting better in school. And I'm like, oh, I really like art. And I love comics. But the thing is, is that, oh, you know, I'm thinking. And I remember thinking back then, I'd like to probably, I'd like to make art a career, become an illustrator or something. And I remember loving comics and seeing, I'm like, I could never do this. <laughs> Looking at Kubert's work and and Walter Simonson's work. And uh, I just, it just totally pushed me away. But you weren't, you weren't like a comic book geek kid growing up, were you? You were no, just kind I, of on the periphery? No, I like to war comics and I like to uh, like Werewolf by Night. I was a monster mm -hmm. kid, big time. As I think I did pretty well at this sci-fi. Uh, um, you did surprisingly okay. well. And, and I've got, well, I got a little clip in our little segment we call Precious Moments that, that is actually sort of a tribute to you being on the show. But we'll get to that in a little while. Thank you, my friend. Mm -hmm. so, uh, um, so then I was in school, in college, and my art teacher came to me, one of my teachers, my professors, I, was, I was, went to the Fashion Institute of Technology, I was an illustration major, and one of my professors came to me and said, we were doing something about comics, um, and she showed us the Pander Brothers, uh, Christina Spar Grendel mini okay. mm -hmm. said, This art is so similar to your art, I think you should make comic books. This reminds me, whenever I saw that, when I, as soon as I saw this, I said, Billy's art reminds me of this. And then I, that's when I got into it. So I'm like, oh yeah, that, I thought it looked great. Um, again, a little intimidated. And then one of the guys in class brought in the amazing Spider-Man number 300 with the Todd McFarlane cover. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and then I looked, I'm like, wow. He's like, this is the hottest book, blah, blah, blah. You know, they were just a couple. There was a couple of comic guys. You know, I was hanging with the chicks for the most part. My buddy Johnny, oh, and yeah. just up, my buddy John Tartaglioni, whose father is John Tartaglioni Senior, longtime um, inker for for Marvel. Uh, lots of stuff. He did the the Pope Fran. You know, the Pope John Paul the 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 second book that sold something like six million copies, and it mm -hmm. was like two years before royalties kicked in. He got no royalties from it. Oh, um, so, so Johnny, Johnny was into comics when he was a kid, but he was burnt out by the time he got to college. He's like, I don't want to be anywhere near comics. It's, it's all I, and he kind of looked down upon it, believe it or not. Um, anywho, when I saw that Todd McFarlane art, and I don't want this to sound weird, but I'm like, oh my God, I, I loved how he played with anatomy or threw it to the wind. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, he was not, uh, you know, a John Romita. He was not, you know, a Frank Miller, you know, or anything, even Frank's storytelling. Well, I like Frank's storytelling and I love Klaus's um, um, inks. But this is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I got into this after, uh, after, after college. And I saw this and I got to tell you, I said, holy shit, if this guy can do this, I can do it. And that, and you know what? That is what people used to say. We used to sit around and speculate all the time and why the image guys were so hot. Because other than... Jim Lee, who was, and you know, Dale and Silvestri. and Silvestri, but you know, Liefeld and McFarlane, yeah. the guys that were probably the two most popular, yeah, were kind of like well, we didn't, no one really thought they were great artists, but we're like, why, what's their appeal? And someone yeah. said, I don't know if this is true or not, they said, because kids look at that and say, I can do that. I think that, there's I think, more to it than that, but it sounds to me that's kind of like you. Like, that, is exactly, that is exactly what happened in my case. Um, I, I'm, I, and I loved it. I thought it was fun. You know, I, it, it seemed, it, it was. I mean, they just played with everything. You know, like like perspective. You know, and, and uh, there was none really. Uh, <laughs> background. There was none of that either. Who the hell likes drawing backgrounds? So. Uh, then I got into it. That's that's what kicked me, kickstarted me into it. I remember going to mid. It was called Midtown. No, it was actually called Manhattan Comics mm -hmm. on Twenty Third Street. And I went down to Manhattan Comics, and the book was ten dollars. <laughs> well, because I was, it was a collector's item already at that already, point. It was like a month a month old, and they had it up it for mm. whatever. So I got like I I got a couple of the other you know three twenty seven, three twenty eight, three twenty nine. You know that or whatever two twenty eight twenty. You know like that. But yeah. Right. He had the, the preceding issues were all still a buck, you know, or dollar twenty five or whatever it was. So I'm like, that was a big venom buy. issue, man. Yeah. So uh, that was it. And then I, that's when I got. Then I just went full bore. I I love Daredevil. I uh, I started buying um, all Frank Miller stuff. Uh, you know, like like the whole Daredevil run. I had that. Um, and I remember the first X Men comic I picked up was that two sixty four with Jim Lee's cover with Wolverine and Black uh, Widow and. Uh, Captain America on the cover 
And I remember opening up and seeing Captain America flying. And I really like Jim's art a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, well, mm -hmm. this guy's great. And then by then, though, I was kind of, you know, I I, I, had grad, I, I was you know, a senior or whatever I was in college. And I my confidence just rose. I'm like, I'm going to do this. And then four years later, I finally, I guess I became an overnight success four years later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which so she, the, the, the reality one. has to be, the reality has to be, though, you went to, um, you took fashion illustration, right? So yeah, yeah, we were. That school must amazing. have been full of either uh, nothing but gay men and mm -hmm. hot chicks, right? Yeah, I got to show you pictures. I could. Share. So you must have been scamming chicks the whole time you were in college. Is Dude, that I got, how do you, you think I would have gotten Debbie, Debbie Steffens, my wife, if mm -hmm. I went to like a real college? There's no way. <laughs> hey, that's not true. I'm like, yeah, no. So, so really, the, the truth is, you didn't go for illustration. You went for the women. Well, I went into, so I, I can show you. You want me to show you some pictures? Show me some pictures. Gonna, show us. I'm going to find some. Show your some extended stuff. family some Eddie's pictures. Not watching, so. <laughs> Let me see. I got, okay. Oh, okay. So here is, oh, man. I can totally miss um, Where is, let me see if it's. I, I can show this. This is okay. See, this yeah, is I was like, gonna say, don't show me the nudie pics. You don't get no, I don't have any nudie pics. I don't have any nudie pics. Uh, okay. But I can <laughs> no, maybe I shouldn't, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, let me grab a vid. I'm gonna grab a video. That's what I'll do. All right. Okay. So uh, I'll grab a video. Let me go into video master. I actually <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh too um... my friend, too much fun. 40% Zed said no one was a comic geek though. Kids just read comics. It's only now that people base their identity around the medium they consume. Well, you know, he's absolutely That's right. Interesting. Well, but I was, I was, I, what I meant by that was that he was into it or I was into it. Like I was really into it. You know, I was a Marvel zombie and I like tracked all the different titles and the different artists and things like that. Right. Billy, you were just a normal comic reader growing up. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I was, cause I, I played hockey from when I was probably like eight years old. So I well, played I a lot of basketball. Hockey. Yeah, I, I I had dirt bikes. So I, I I raced dirt bikes, and that's kind of that was my big thing. I was in the drama club. Me too. Uh, but I but I I didn't want to act. I was uh, the sets. I wanted to do. I, so I was designing all the sets. But I did get to act in a play, Phantom of the Opera, eighth grade. I became. They made me the stage manager because I was a stage manager for the most part. In junior high, I did seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. I did the drama club, and well, you, you showed off your acting chops on a Comic Skate Kings on Monday night with some great uh, readings. There. I think I'm the best Marissa Tomei in all CG. I think you might be. Now, see, yeah. I was in I was in drama too. I was the Music Man. I was the Wizard in the Wizard of Oz. Oh, wow, so you were a real actor. So you were like the Dad a in uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. So you know, I did a little bit. Oh, that's great! I love Cheaper by the Dozen. But um, I did. Where is that? Why isn't that popping up? Yeah, I was like, "Come on, man, we want uh, your girl, old girlfriend videos." I got a fun. I have a video. I'm gonna grab a video of, and I have Debbie too and stuff. Citizen Ronan have... says drama club. So Billy's gay. Well, yeah. you know, it is. It is yeah, what it is. But I had one line, and my <clears throat> was it was Phantom of the Opera, and I came in with flowers for uh, Madame Madame Carlotta, who okay. was the. Um, uh, the diva before Christine takes over, you know, takes over the role of the Phantom. And I remember my line was more flowers for Madame Carlotta. Oh, Carlotta. And I said, mm -hmm. I said, uh, you know, we uh, her office must be filled by now. And I run off stage <laughs> and, then I, and then I start pulling ropes again and stuff. <laughs> but uh... My acting, acting. But I did make movies when I was a kid. And I could show you that, too, because I wanted to be a director. But my friend Ronnie, Me who was too. supposed to, my fr I can, sh I think I have my pirate movie. If you want to see that too. <laughs> now, a snake oiler says you were in Brokeback Mountain, the musical. So yes. I don't know if that's true or not. Yes, yes, it's sad, sad but true. Um, I was the horse, unfortunately. One of the <laughs> horse, I would rather be. I was. I would oh my be, uh, gosh. I still remember lines from the music, man. I don't remember any lines from Cheaper by the Dozen, though. Except was, except one of the kids said, oh, I wish I were dead. And then I said, what a thing to wish. And then <laughs> it was like, oh, he did three performances. And two of the performances, that line got laughs. And one of them didn't. Oh, so it was like, 
it depended on how the audience wanted to take it. Is he trying to be funny or is this like a really heavy, serious moment? So it was really bizarre. But there you go. What a thing to wish. <laughs> or, <laughs> so. All right. I got some videos here. Rodney Labari saying you have the worst French accent. You got to work on that, Rodney. Well, now, I was an actor. I'm sure I could. Then I practiced. So I think you I know, did. you need to practice a little bit. Well, sure. Now, would I have to walk? You know, the French don't even have a language. They just had this accent. They just walk around like Maurice Chevalier. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, we were, we were trying to talk. We were talking a little pig French last week. Uh, oh, were you? <laughs> Well, you know, kind of like the pig Latin, but it was just kind of, you know, making up French stuff. And I was like, where? And then the people in the chat just started like dropping French all over me. And I was like, I had no idea what they're saying. And I'm like, where's Shelly when you need her? Because she actually does speak French. So Rodney says that's better. He prefers my accent. And I, that's good. Um, De Debbie speaks French as well. Well, French in class. And when she was, okay, so here we go. I got a video here. <laughs> Marcus Killercruz says, my son was hey. in the music man and then became captain of the football team. I was captain of the basketball team. That's why I quit acting. Uh, really? Cause I was too cool to act uh, when I got into high school. So of course, every man, um, right. Here is, here, here is a video. Right. Let me see what I got. <laughs> good stuff what is this like come up to my room and we'll shoot a video kind of thing that you were yeah like well yeah I, okay i can show my girlfriend angie who was before uh well okay so before debbie so my first love my first great love was okay. um a, a greek girl she was greek um you know american born born yeah born in greece but came in when she was four months four years four months old okay and uh, but the thing was was that her family was really Greek. And, you know, we loved each other, but I just could never go to her house, you know? I could never, for holidays. And then, you know, she had a boyfriend and I had Debbie. So we were kind of seeing each other, you know, back and whoa, forth. Whoa, 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 slow down a minute. So you were cheating on Debbie? No, You're saying that right now? my girlfriend. No, Debbie was seeing someone too. You know, like it was... So it was like Dolly Parton's marriage. It was like an yeah, open relationship. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I just they, these two two young women were just so opposite, but they were amazing. They're just two of the two of the best people I've ever met in my life were these two women, girls. Okay. So I'm trying. Are you, are you going to share this or what? I yeah. Mean, but, all right. I'm. Just, give me a second. Oh, well, give you a second. You've oh, had so like twenty is, minutes. Okay. So this is Christmas, <laughs> 1988. All right. All right. So Angie comes to my dorm room, and then we okay. go out. Whoa. Okay. Oh, good lord. We go to Macy's. So you're gonna see New York City and Macy's on okay. Christmas. Oh, she's gonna hate me for this. If <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. Okay. All right. Is oh. pop up? Okay. Let's see. All there right. it is. Here we go. All right. Actually, I'll the lights on. Okay. Oh. Okay. That's my room. Oh. That's the night before I was cleaning my room because you know. Yeah. No, wait a minute. This isn't a yeah. dorm room. Are you in an apartment? Yeah, a dorm room. No, they were dorms. There, there was a dorm room. Wow. Look at you get all, uh, you know. Yeah, let me see. Hang on. Okay, so let's... Oh, there she is. Okay, good. Oh. All right, here we go. So, hang on. All right, here she is. Oh, look how cute she is. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We missed oh, the good part. Just one other thing. <laughs> so, I had this, and I annoyed everybody with this camera, but they were also happy get later it, on. Get it all? That's, well, that's Cal's me for Christmas. Yeah. So, oh, so I got her a yeah, goopy. Look how cute she was. <laughs> so we will go. All right, Lopez, in context. Hold oh, this over a second, baby, so I can see, you know, your outfit. All right, so in context, oh. we, in the 80s, we were living in New York City, so we always got, we'd go to, you know, like, I would save my money to take her to a nice dinner, you know, or we got dressed up. You know, we, we yeah. were getting dressed up to go out and stuff, so. Can you flash you? Look at that. Bam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right, let's go. Well, Hang on. Billy, I'll tell you this. You and I shared one thing growing up. We had good good taste in uh, women. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Here we go. This is us. Oh, his his on the street. <laughs> I yeah. Let me find some other stuff. Class stuff. All right, here's class stuff. Here we go. Oh, here's my classroom. Okay, here we go. Ready? A I'm better. ready. This is better. <laughs> So this is all 80s art kids, you know, these, Laura, these, Laura. my friend Laura. Johnny, are you mad? That's John Tartaglioni's son, if you know who he is. <laughs> so boy. Look, look at the 80s. Look at his hair, man. Look at that hairdo. November 30th, 1988. Yeah. 
Jeez, it looks like you're shooting a Bigfoot video. Steady that cam. Oh, oh she's cute. Yeah. yeah I'll be, uh, get up, stand up for a second. Spin around or something. So yeah. jump it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> <Just follow me. laughs> uh, jump on the table. Hey, stand up and spin around for me, girl, will you? Yeah. Oh, that is so funny. All right, so let me find some other stuff here. <clears throat> anyway, that's my friend Brenda. But look at the hair. They're all Billy's friends. Oh, look at that. Steve. No, hey, what's up? Let's hear you doing. Billy Bob. This is all fashion design, or is this just yeah, well, yeah, now we're doing Art Nouveau stuff, I think. So he did this airbrush. <laughs> this was illustration, though. Angie, let's see the, the curve of the fall. Angie. Wait a minute, it's for... Look how cute she is. Look at that. <laughs> oh. All right. We're going to zoom up on Carmen. Anyway, all right, that's that. <laughs> what were you uh, shooting that? Do you just like an old video, uh, well, a it's video a camera? video camera, a gigantic video camera. Because they there was nothing small back then. They were just no, like it these was, huge it cameras. VHS tapes. So I'm carrying this. It was like a big like a news yeah. camera almost it wasn't like a little you know i think i had a trigger and i held it up high like this and i filmed it. i got hours and i got like eight hours of film from oh from God. the fall, new york city from the fall of 1988 to january of uh, or summer of 88 to january of uh 89 <laughs> the only the only stuff oh. i have is i got some of my short films from film school and um i always cast really good looking girls in my Cause I was like, <laughs> why wouldn't I, you know? Yeah. Of course. So um, everybody's like, you know, and I did care about their acting ability. So I would go through until I found the best looking one that could act. And that's yes. in my movie <laughs> priorities. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they had to be able to act. I would not compromise that, but yeah. uh, you know, anyway, yeah, enough yeah. about that. Yeah, so so that's I got into comics because of that. And then I tried to, to get work then. I mean, I, I you know, I didn't have a, a style really. <laughs> no, I didn't. Have a no, no, I had, I went back and forth, you know, when you're a kid and you're, you know, we we're kids who we are 20, you know, yeah. 21, um, 19. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, I, I was eight girls, every guy in this half the guys were gay. My God, Aaron, <laughs> my God, Lopez. I know it's true. That's oh yeah, she looked like me. Yeah, she was prettier than me, Sarah. I thought she was gorgeous. She was. I mean, yeah. one time I I dropped her off at Penn Station. She 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 came in. I worked at Macy's in the design department. I was designing. Now, was she from me. New York or was New she Jersey. from someplace else? New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay. So I put her on. So she was saying goodbye to me, um, in front of my and my, my office. My where I worked. The building I worked in was across the street from Penn Station. So I gave her a kiss goodbye, and she walked across the street to go to Penn Station to go home, and two cabs crashed into each other. It was like a movie. They both <laughs> must have been looking at her because she was, like I said, she was just stunning. And, and hey, fuck her. I'm like, I'm like, like, that was you. She's like, no, I wasn't, no. I'm like, it's so good. And they it's like the episode of, it was like the episode of Seinfeld where that girl wa wears a bra, yeah. on, you know, and just walks down the street and their cars are crashing. And what was her name? What was that? What was, I don't know if it was Kelly, but it's like, Kelly. It's a bra. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like Kramer takes her to court and they, you know, tries to sue yeah. her. Oh my gosh, that was good. Brilliant. Um, oh, Aaron, I loved, uh, I, 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 uh, I loved, I was going to re, re, uh, your, um, your Wonder Woman, right? With the white dress. Uh, you just posted it. No, I, that was, that was the Mighty Isis. Oh, the Mighty Isis. I, I actually grabbed it and threw it onto my desktop. I was going to share it. Uh, like on Facebook or Twitter. I just love it. I think it's so oh, great. I love everything about it. I'm a fan. Well, thank you, Billy. I appreciate that. So anyways, I'll, again, um... how, yeah, so how I got into comics is uh, then I, you know, I'm like, well, I want to be a comic book creator, but I had a full-time job at Macy's. Um, and then uh, I was just, you know, start doing samples and all and going around and I wanted to draw Daredevil. So I would draw Daredevil, you know, sample pages and stuff like that. And obviously not as much as I wanted to because I was working full time but mm -hmm. eventually um i kept i got turned down way too many times a joke i like to tell and not a joke but a story i like to tell is then i created she i actually created she in 1990 
Um, but I then I had she in my samples and I remember bringing the first 12 pages to, to uh, Adam Post, uh, who had triumphant comics at the time. Uh, to publish she and he said ah you know billy i'm gonna pass on this because girl books don't sell (laughs) (laughs) the fool fool. Um, you fool okay well a bigger question to me then is where did she come from where's all this fascination with japanese culture where does this come from well i remember in a class um it might have been the work we were doing for that class in the video uh it was uh, i discovered the japanese woodblock prints and I fell in love with him, Aaron. I love mm. the idea that remember when we were young, we we're in art school, and a lot you do a lot of uh, chiaroscuro, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of shading, things like that. You work, you know, you you work on all that shading and stuff, and and uh, and that was fun. But you could hide a lot with shading. What I what I loved about the uh, the Japanese woodblock prints, it's it's there's no shading in it at all, so it's all drawing. It's all like two, you know, two, you know. Double right. light it's all line drawing. It's all yep. line and I drawing. love that. I love that about it. I, I thought if you can convey, you know, art without having the cat, you know, do too much shadow, and, you know, when need be, you do. But I just I was so fascinated by it. And then I just being a history buff that I am, I, uh, I just got into the samurai, the story of the samurai and the history of the samurai. And Anna is is a descendant of the Sohai, the Sohai, which were the warrior monks of medieval Japan. And uh, they're the ones with the white flowing cowls and they had the naginatas and and uh, I don't know, just started putting together this story. The character actually started off as a male character. Uh, and, really? Yep. And then I'm like, you know what? This Was one- he called he? <laughs> Thank you. <I> know. <laughs> Thank you. First time I ever asked that. First time. <laughs> so, hey, now, uh- no. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Jerry Roscoe for five oh, bucks. Thank yeah. you, Jerry, very much. Says Aaron and Billy are two guys who know the importance of marrying above their batting average. Shelly and Debbie Rock. Thank you oh, very God, much. Oh, yeah. God, I can show you. I'm going to find a Debbie at college, too. And you see how cute she is. I burst, burst into her room on Halloween when we went to the parade at Greenwich Village, which was just nuts, which I guess is like every parade this, you know, this weekend. Uh, yeah. Every parade, every parade a weekend in June was like how it was back then. And now it's kind of like you know normal. Then it was like, look at these freaks! What the hell is that? <laughs> so I remember me and my buddies come to go visit. <laughs> I'll show you that. Oh, she was cute. Now David Brohawk wants to know, Billy, when are you coming to be on Graybeard's stream and draw with us? Uh, yeah, you know what, uh, Aaron. My thing is, I owe about ten commissions, big commissions, and I can't. I I, I have to draw these commissions first before I start. You know, oh, let's draw sugar pops, you know, whatever. You know, the Pablo's <laughs> <and> sugar pops. <laughs> well, we draw Count Chocula. I'm going to have someone murder. People them. love the serial icons, Bill. Oh, I love, love it. I love it. I love it. I, no, no, I watch it. So I'd love to, to do it, but there's no, I, I, people would kill me for not. I understand. I understand. So once I get done with those commissions over the summer, um, I, I would love to do that. Okay, well, we'll just we'll keep tabs on you. Thank you. Uh, Rodney Labari. Rodney Labari says Sue Ellen was the name of the bra menace on Seidenfeld. Sue, Sue Ellen. Ellen. It's a bra. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's a bra, like smiling. All right, I might have to use. Look at Andino Palazzo says Tucci is too good to be drawing with bums. Wow. Wow. That uh, here. Let me it's take care of that. Room. There we go. What a it's a tough room, Aaron. I know these guys are just they're, they're merciless. Yeah, they Especially are. Especially and Dino. I gotta keep my eye on him all the time. Oh, it is Angie again. Oh my god. Uh hey, Dan Genovesi, the pizza man is in the hey! house. Yeah. Let's vote for which sugar pops the graybeards will draw. Which sugar pops? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I found that. I found that. So my my friend Michelle, who's also beautiful too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Goes without saying. She had a cat. Uh, she she found she adopted a kitten at college. Like she found it on the street, mm-hmm. a kitten, and brought it to the class to try to to, to our dorm rooms. And it, the kitten lasted about a week. Not that they killed it, but <laughs> she, got, she got caught with the kitten. But she brought the kitten over to my room because everyone's bringing people to, to me. Like, uh huh. It's like it. you're the pimp or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything so comes through you. Yeah, so here's Debbie with her big hair coming back from work and all. Hang on, with the kitten. So you just go see Debbie with a kitten. This is big hair. Dirt. No, was Debbie actually in school there with you, or did you meet her? Oh yeah, no, yeah, De- yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, Debbie was a, a a business major, so I was doubly smart. 
Okay, well, what school were you guys going to? The Fashion Institute of Technology. So wait a minute. She goes to the Fashion Institute of the Technology fashion. to take business classes? Yeah, fashion buying and merchandising. She oh, okay. I see. I got you. All right. Someone's got to buy that shit. All right. So I... I uh... <laughs> Oh, all right. I shared it, Aaron. All right, here we go. This is Big Hair Debbie. Big Hair Debbie. Let's all right. Make the screen you know, a little bit bigger here. See, there's your there's your ISIS. See, in the corner there. Oh yeah. And then okay. I'm like, this is okay. Here we go. So here's Debbie. Let me see. Debbie. Look, Debbie. There she's playing with this kid. So Debbie. It's just a kitten. Just I get a kitten. Now Debbie's like, oh my God, I, I got I have to see this kitten and play with this kitten. Right. So that was you used, used that to lure the girls in. That oh yeah, sucks. yeah, dude. It's Look better than it. puppies. Kittens are better than puppies. Look at Debbie. <laughs> I can look at these forever. Look how hot she is. Holy shit. Oh yeah. But see, Aaron, look at look how they dress. Yep. With suits and, and skirts and heels mm -hmm. and oh my god. You're gonna make. I'm gonna have to bring out some classic uh, Shelly stuff here. You have to. I don't know if I have any videos of her though. I just have pictures. For shame. I know. For shame. Oh, oh. Let me see. Oh, there's my buddy. Oh, here's my buddy Pete Shuchuk. So we were the only conservatives. <laughs> Let me see. If he's here talking about. Uh, so even back, George back Bush then, won. even back then, you were a conservative. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with yeah. George, look, here's Debbie. Look at her. <laughs> Max. Max. They named, we named the cat Max, which is so funny. Holy shit. Because Michelle's son is named Max. Wow. I got to find Michelle on this video, but let me see if this is when shoot Chuck after George. Hey, is this when George Bush won? Let me see. Okay, here we go. Look, Dukakis. This is when Bush is running against Dukakis. Hang on. Let's see. He's coming right next. So... I don't know if I can mute this. Right? Oh, here we go. So we can watch this while I do that. So I, so when Giuliani was running in 89, I went to the Giuliani offices and I wanted to, um, to volunteer for the campaign. So they're like, well, we need people to put out posts. So they gave me a stack of about 40 posters and everybody in the dorms on uh, 27th street between 7th and 8th Avenue, all the kids, they're all, we're all like suburban kids. Mm -hmm. So we were all, Everyone's voting for Giuliani. They're all Republicans. This is remember Reagan, you know, was was pre, you know was their mm -hmm. president growing up. So I had the whole, all the door windows had Giuliani. There had to be forty of them in the windows. All Giuliani um, posters <laughs> and the administ and I was president of the students and the administration got pissed. Oh, it was so upset. Hey, Michael Ruzioni. I'm, 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 I would just here, here's, here's Pete. Hang on. Hell is he? Come on. He's, he's going to be talking about that. This is not. Come on, Pete. All right, let's see if this works, right? That's my roommate, yeah. Brian. I want to. Okay. I'd like to tell something to the Pakistan fans. Here. Card carrying member of the American Civil Liberties Union. He's very far left wing. It's not what this country this country needs. Really. George Bush, who's the right of center, who's strong on defense, who's strong in the Judeo Christian values, who's against abortion, which has killed more people than the population of Australia. Like I said, he's a strong defense, and like missile, Minuteman missile. Do not give in to Mikhail Gorbachev and the new power bureau of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Look at that. Boy, there's a commercial for it right there. To Texas. Excuse me, monthly taxes. taxes. Now, Willie Horton, the furlough killer, went down to Baltimore, Maryland, raped and killed another girl. You expect that? Massachusetts economic recovery due to Ronald Wilson Reagan. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, please vote for George Bush and Dan Quayle. And the bitch! Oh! <laughs> you know, you know. I used to think Dan Quayle is the stupidest person ever to hold public office until AOC got elected. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, this, so, is, this is my friend Ann. Where is she? She was cute too. Oh boy! You just basically, Good. video logged your entire uh, yeah, yeah, every oh, girl is, you ever knew. This is Halloween. Here's Halloween. Uh, so here we go, break it into Debbie's room. <laughs> Yeah, she is. That's Debbie right there. This Pam her roommate, and she's still friends with all these girls. All these girls, they just went to Pennsylvania a few weeks ago. Well, that's Debbie. Great. Is Debbie drinking a wine cooler or something on Halloween? All right, here we go. 
Let's do it. We just come back from the parade. We probably drank like four Bud Lights each, so we're hammered. <laughs> Bud no, Lights, that's yeah. appropriate. Yeah. This is Debbie's room. Just walk in, right? This is the dorm. Look, that's Debbie. Let me stand up for a second. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, yeah, you know what's great is to have this kind of stuff. Lisa, you know, so, so this is Lisa. Lisa yelling at so you. So Lisa married her boyfriend Mark. They're still married. Uh, my buddy Mark Sasso, who's a, who's actually has a contributing artist since she sent Riaku. All day today. What the hell is this thing in my life? So Lisa yelled at me. Hi now. You gotta... Look at the hair. Look at that. <laughs> uh, oh, are, you, are you happy now, Billy? But is Lisa happy? <laughs> What's even worse, happier. <gasps> but look at these girls. Like so they would all get the same for their dorm room. They got the matching bedding and everything, so everything matched. I love all these girly girls. Oh, there's Debbie again. Look at her. Mad at me. You're dating her, or are you guys just friends at this point? No, we would no, we always date from the beginning. Okay. Oh, oh, no, we loved each other. It, it was, uh, okay. but Susan was, Ronan says the wine cooler was the king of female beverages in the 80s. That is true. It is true. Who's this? Oh, oh, this is us at the. the you like well, film? Look at you! We're ho at holding club. this big camera around. You guys were yeah, at a we're dance at a, club. I, yeah, yeah we, we look at this. That's me on the right. I bet you my buddy Hawk is filming this. So. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see Debbie. Debbie coming out. Oh, you have more hair than Debbie. That's my friend Rachel. <laughs> my friend Kathleen. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen these. So I have not looked at these in, I, I don't know how long, a decade? <laughs> but I remember like yesterday. I was with Debbie. That's my friend Sue. That's annoying, isn't it? I know it's dark because it's in a club. Yeah. Uh, Geek Avenger for $2 says wine coolers equals girl beer. Oh, God. Thank you, Geek Avenger. Appreciate that. What is Debbie at the club? What is my Evil boy? One says, I can smell the hairspray from here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got my friend Elise who created the Amazing Race. She uh, is a 10 time Emmy Award winner now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Look at the hair. Let me, I'll show you. Let me see if I can oh, find it. Oh, my goodness. Me. I'm taping over hockey games. <laughs> it's Pete. Oh, this is what this is. After, want to hear what he says at the George Bush one? <laughs> he doesn't look very happy, though. Wow. No, he's real happy. We were sad. Ladies and gentlemen, look. America is based on the work ethic. And that's why George Bush had an avalanche <laughs> Tuesday, November 8th. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, just this crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, we were all conservatives. I was a super conservative back then. We like oh. A, oh, no, that's not good. We can't say that. Ah, the good old days. Look the good old days, Please. buddy. Wow. Oh my God! You basically chronicled your whole college experience, yeah. man. Yeah, here's video. my friend. Yep, here's Elise who created. She's a. Uh... Hang on. Oh, what the? Hey, now. All right, so Look my friend padded had... shoulders. Remember the padded shoulders? Yeah, man? yeah. She was she was just uh, just perfect too. Like she's one of my best friends. Oh, I had the same bed sheets as Debbie too. I guess Debbie bought me those bed sheets, the same ones they had in their room. Look at the, here's Elise. Man, was that a cape or a mullet? That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, we you know I, I'm gonna save these. <laughs> anyway, that's that. Let's 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 just stop sharing. Stop. Well, on that note, I think it's I think it's appropriate that we uh, pull up your uh, your campaign and share this with our uh, with our viewership here. <laughs> After you've been so kind to share your. Uh, your my youth college video. I, I was a mere yo, uh, I was a mere lark. Oh my gosh, just a youngin. Just a youngin. Um, okay, now Thank Billy. You. Whoa! I, I got to give you a I got to give you a, a special assignment here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a roast that has to go into the oven. The oven's on. It's ready to go. I just have to run downstairs, throw it in the oven, and be back. So I need you right now. To tell everybody about your she omnibus. Okay, you know what? I'll be the back in thirty seconds. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, she should have ran the video, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> See the 
the, uh, yes, I, I am evil one. Anyway, um, hey, buddy, she, she sent Ryako on the bus edition. This has got to be the most beautiful, uh, thought provoking, entertaining, and enlightening she series we've ever done. It's uh, based, it's uh, 36 individual short stories illustrated by some of the biggest names in comics, including Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Adam Hughes, George Perez, Joe Casada, Jimmy Pamiati, Amanda Connor, Jeff Smith, uh, Terry Moore. Oh, man. Jason Pearson. The list goes on and on. A cornucopia of talent in this book. Whoa, that was quick. Hey, I told you I said to run downstairs, throw it in the oven, and it'd be right back. How so, how where 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 are you in a, in 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 context of your kitchen? Where are you that you were able to go down to the kitchen that fast and throw a a, a, a roast in the oven? Well, it was already sitting in the uh, the Dutch oven, so I just had to open up the the oven and throw it in there, close it, and run back upstairs. It was already preheated, oh. ready to go. I planned this out. Oh, excellent! So for the uninitiative. What is a Dutch oven? It's like a big old black iron cast iron pot with a lit cast iron lid on it, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, it's great for cooking roasts or uh, you can do like uh, German pancakes in them, things Ooh. like that. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old fashioned cooking tool that my mom, when she moved in with us, brought with her. We got to bring that. So she has all of her cast iron cookware we transplanted over here to the house and so uh it, the cleanup on them is kind of it's not as easy as non-stick stuff obviously right. you got to put that little it, that, it, that powdery actually, stuff in it you put that powder huh? you put that powder in it's like a powdery thing to clean it or you just oh yeah it. well it depends on uh my mom does the dishes so i don't uh i said if, i said if you want to stay out of a home you got to do the dishes here. So as soon as you stop doing the dishes, right to the home with you. Excellent. So, so that's your mom when you when when your mother is is when she is, you know, croqueting crocheting, the uh, the wraith of God toys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's going to be bagging and boarding books because uh, yeah. tomorrow our our second print of uh, Wraith of God number one is delivered right here in my garage, and uh, she, mm. there's. She's going to be bagging and boarding those things, and I'm going to be shipping them out starting Exceptional. Tuesday. So, Exceptional. But anyway, enough about me, Billy. Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about me real quick because there was a thing that you're going to find this interesting is when you speaking of when you said German pancakes. Mm -hmm. So I last time I was down in uh, Par in old Paris, if you will, um, I it was at breakfast, and I had asked for toast. And then wow. she brought me the meal and she brought me regular bread toast. And I said, no, I want toast. <laughs> you wanted French toast. toast. I, said, <laughs> I said, then I, then I, then I was teasing her, you know, and I said, I said, I'm like, no, you know, French toast. I want, and she's like, well, you didn't ask for French toast. I said, well, I'm in France. I friggin' <laughs> French toast is just toast in France. And Debbie's yelling and getting, she's like, you're an asshole. <coughs> oh, too much fun, Lopez. That's see, that's what they call the ugly American. The ugly, I was really. just saying that the ugly American. <laughs> yep. So anyway, so yeah, I don't know if you want to show the video. The video has a lot of information in it. Well, I, I you know what? Yep. I'm having trouble getting my sound to play when I play the video. The video will play, but for some reason the sound doesn't work. And I, I can share if you want to share my screen. Then you guys can't hear that, can you? No, I, I can share my screen. All right. If you got if you got your campaign up, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it live. Let's do it live. That way this you can control right? the transmission. You can control what we see. And the master controller. All right, so this, you know, this is fun, Lopez. Thank you for this. Sure. Uh, Mighty Geek Studio says that is the oldest joke in French, Billy. Like, yes, so I know. want the young girl. better material I from you. I don't, well, I don't think she had heard it yet. All right, Lopez, I'm sharing. Okay, here we go. There it All is. All right, so here's our video. Am I going to get a copyright strike on this? No. This is, uh, <laughs> it, it, we, uh, I, we bought this music for $55. I'm just kidding. I meant for you. Oh, my God. Oh, 
Okay, so at this, if I may, please. Uh, when when you have to think, and I said this on the Bros the other day, was that when I conceived of this to do this this book on the thirty six strategies of the art of war, and I'm getting everybody. You know, I just met mm -hmm. Jim Lee and all these guys the summer before. This is February of 1995. So when I watch this movie, I get very, I get choked up in, in a way because we were able to pull off something that no one thought could happen was to get all the biggest artists from both the independent you know, sector and then the mainstream, the biggest names to all contribute to this book. And I think about it because in February of 94, Aaron, that was a month before she number one came out. Mm -hmm. I was broke as hell. I, I, I was six months behind my rent. I know? was broke in 94 as well. <laughs> oh, I thought you already established. I thought you were already the big cheese by then. Well, actually, wait, I take that back. I had gotten uh, some royalty checks from Spider-Man backups and from Sludge. So I had I had some money. That, actually, probably 94 was probably one of the better years of my career. So I oh, take no. it back. Oh. <laughs> I take it well, back. It, well, this is February of 94. So, um, and, I, and I remember Jack Kirby died and I had these dreams of meeting him at San Diego. Uh, and, uh, but so when I watched this video, I can't believe it that we were actually able to do this book and to get all these great artists to come about. This is a Ray Lago piece. And, and the, the, the other miracle is that we have almost all the original art. I think we're missing two pieces of art. One I suspect is in my flat files. And I'm going to do a deep dive tomorrow, which is Umberto Ramos's um, mm -hmm. original yeah. inks. If I can't find Umberto Ramos's original art, um, we're going to get um, someone to ink it uh, for us. And uh, I actually reached out to Gary Martin and he said he'd do it. So that will be awesome to have Gary oh, Martin. Cool. Yeah, to recreate it. Yeah, and Gary would, yeah. Gary would do Humberto. I have, a beautiful really black well. and, I have a black and white scan. I have the, the K file. Mm. Files used to be broke up into CMYKs back <clears> then. <throat> K file. It would just need to be re-inked. Okay, so now wait a second. What year was it that you collected all these pinups originally? It's 1995 now. So when okay, I look so at this, She had been out a year and it was such oh, a hit right. that you were able to get all these guys to do a piece. Yes, and, and I think of it when I first conceived of this and started hiring these guys to do it a year earlier, I was broke and, and terrified and had, you know, did not know where I was going to be. So I find it. That's it, how it, I feel now. All right, so go me, ahead. Uh, don't drink to that buddy. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Here we go. making videos of Debbie 30 years later. I got to tell you, Lopez, what a time it was. Indeed. It was, was nothing quite like the 90s, was it, there? There is not. It was a fantastic time. Oh, we're, we're 64,000. Look at that. Holy crap. We were like 61 yesterday. Thank you, guys. Oh, oh. hey. hey. RubyJade90 for $5. Thank you so much, Ruby Jade. Can't wait for Sinraku. Sinru How do you say that? Sakura. Oh, oh, Sen oh, can't wait for Senryaku. Senryaku. 
But yeah. when do we get a follow up to She Sakura? I just read it and loved every page. Thank you, Ruby Jade. We are working on that right now. Uh, my next book is She um, uh, Gate Crasher, which is good. That's our next one. And then Stephen Perry. Oh, well, wait a minute. You're you doing a She title without a Japanese word in it? Yes, we're, I'm getting rid of the Japanese words. It drives too many people crazy. I was yeah. that. That's like the fun thing. It's like trying to pronounce Billy's book. Oh, is it? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Evil one for five dollars says the she omnibus better be drawn by Jim Lee, all of it, or I'm not buying it. Oh. Uh, JK, I better be getting a sketch on my she oh, yeah, omnibus yeah. this time, Billy. Did I screw him over and not do it? I don't know. Evil one, he sounds bitter, so you something know, must I can be going only wrong. Do, I, I can only do what they what they give me, you know, what Debbie gives me. Yeah, so well, it's Deborah's fault. You take it is. It's her. Debbie's fault. You saw her in the video. It's all her yeah. fault. And if you don't want <laughs> to talk to Debbie about it, uh, and you want me to talk to Debbie about it, then you never mention that thing about showing Angie in those videos. All right. That's so, right. Uh, <laughs> Brian I'll suddenly be old says, Aaron, you're broke. What happened to the thirty dollars I gave you two weeks ago for Dale's T-shirt? Don't tell me you spent it all on gas. Oh. Uh, yeah, actually, Let's that's probably it. true. That's half. Uh, of <clears throat> that's great so anyway so yeah so we we did it it's this so this book aaron is yes. 240 page hardcover right now our next stretch goal we're coming to it is the, is to have the frank frazetta coverage dust jacket oh that'd be cool yeah now wait a second what else is it hang on what else is in this book besides all the pinups whoa 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 no you're gonna have you're gonna have 36 <laughs> individual, have 36 <laughs> individual sure, pros <laughs> <laughs> slow down what are you yeah no, no, no i'm gonna have so you you have the, you have we have a lot of introductions uh and afterwards essays if you will on senryaku we have all the original black and white art so you we have jim lee's original black and white art alongside his his pinup page you know his pinup full color pinup page art mm -hmm. we have a lot of roughs if you saw ray lago's rough roughs were in there some of my roughs you have a cover gallery we have all the pages, all the story pages are in it. Um, extras, things that never made it into the book. We had a piece that uh, was not um, that that I hired two artists to do the same stratagem. <laughs> and one of them was Jay Lee's and it came in first. So we couldn't use the other artist's work. Oh, uh, so that'll, yeah, that'll be in it. Um, and she is just chock full of goodness. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Uh, Jerry Roscoe says, I know the spotlight is on Billy tonight, but can I get a shout out for my campaign? There are oh. only three days to go on my first one. Uh, well, Jerry, maybe if you told us what the name of the campaign was, I could shout it out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but Jerry Roscoe's campaign, only three days left. There's a shout out for you. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I just want to say that um, someone had asked... Uh, if the Somebody asked if... Oh, oh yeah, uh, Mayormi. Is the Nagel homage on the back of the jacket? Yes, the Nagel homage cover will be on the back of the um, of of the uh, the the Frazetta dust jacket. Well, Brohawk has a question that goes right into that. He wants to know if you were inspired by uh, a, um, Patrick Nagel. Absolutely. So the thing was, I was in incredibly inspired by Patrick Nagel so much so that I became a fan of Duran Duran because of the Rio art, the cover art. Again, oh, really? yeah, and that was again very Japanese. Nagel was very inspired by Japanese woodblock prints, and then my professor at school then turned me on to Alphonse Mucha because he mm -hmm. said this guy is obviously influenced by Alphonse Mucha, and I'm like, who's that? Now, again, yeah, I'm 19, you know, I don't know. Right, sure. And uh, then I discovered a world of Alphonse Mucha, and now I have probably four hundred dollars worth of Alphonse Mucha books and prints and stuff in our house and everything like that. And I love, I love Mucha. As at, who, who doesn't love Alphonse Mucha? It's like who doesn't love Lopez? Right, exactly. This just yeah. just want to put your arms around me. Yeah. Um, so okay, so let me get this straight. So this this 240 page, there's story pages in here, right? It's not just yeah. all it's no. not an art book. No, it's not an art book. That much it, art. No, yeah, no. So what it is is that it's actually a it's like an artist, an artist edition on the bus, really. Because you okay. have all the all the stories will be in the original prose page, mm -hmm. right? And you'll have the roughs, you'll have Tex Sarah's rough, you'll have Joe Jusco's rough, you'll have Ray Lago's roughs, you have some of my roughs, a couple of others. Um, so it will have, you know, there is there is a story here. And it's a, okay. it's a beautiful story. It's, it's Anna being told about history, really, of, of, how, of how a stratagem pertained to an event in history or something that happened to him 
or, you know, things like it's really entertaining. It's a lot of fun, a lot of funny stories. Friends, a friend of mine was in the army. He was in the jungles and they got attacked by uh, monkeys throwing feces and coconuts on them because they invaded. They, they, they ventured into a monkey <laughs> or monkey. I don't know what colony. And the monkeys saw them as a threat. So they started ripping off coconuts and fruit and feces and throwing it on these soldiers. Only, the only you would know this. <laughs> Evil one for $2 says Deb is doing metal sketch editions now. Thanks yep. to me. He says, thanks to you, buddy. Yep. It is. Okay. So like, okay, so here's Jay Lee's original. So you'll see the actual original art, which I all I own. Um, so there's Jay's art. Look at that. How much of this original art did you buy from these guys when they did these pieces? Uh jeez. Maybe all of them. Did you really? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. I think in, uh what am I missing? I was missing Dave Sim. Dave Sim, because Dave sent Dave sent me hit like a, a scan of his. He's up in Canada. Um, or I sent it back to Dave. He want Dave Sim like didn't sell his art or something like that. But a lot of them gifted it to me too. You know, like um, like you know, well, there's an Adam Hughes. There's, he never before seen Adam Hughes piece of art. She mm -hmm. art. Um, like that's hanging in our family room. Debbie loves this. The just Jessica go piece. there. Yep. And uh, Texas in my studio here. No, no, somebody else bought Texas. Someone owns uh, Texas art. That's a great piece. That yeah, Texas isn't that nice? It's huge. Yeah. But um, yeah, some of them gifted them to me, like uh, you know, like Terry Moore gifted it to me. I think Jim Lee gave me his piece. Wow. Uh, yep. Um, hey, Christina. No, I never. I have not been. I I was inv invited to Japan twice, and Lopez. I got to tell you, it's such a long trip. It is. Uh, they wanted me there for like ten days, and I think they invited me after like Willie, my son. Will my kids were little. I'm like, I don't want to be away from my kids for two weeks. Right. So I I never went. And then Debbie couldn't come because the kids were little. Yeah, so, I, I turned down so many trips because uh, a lot of European shows or uh, shows that are off continent are in this in the fall for some reason. And Shelly was a teacher, so she was always teaching. I was like, I am not going on this exotic trip without my wife because right. I will come home and be murdered if I do. Exactly. So I, I had to like I turned down Spain twice. I've turned down uh, Peru and different because we just couldn't go with you know without right. Shelly. So it was uh, you know. And now the cool thing is that the kids are all, you know, the, 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 the nest is empty, but nobody wants us to come to their shows anymore. Now, I know, now they all hate us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, for saying publicly what they all say privately to me. Right, week, exactly, show, exactly. I can't, Andy and I and, and Frag are going to be hanging out the next weekend in um, Charlotte. And there's a lot of artists there. And I guarantee I'll, I'll have stories in the back room. I won't tell yeah, them. Well, <clears throat> I'm waiting to hear, actually. Yeah. Oh. I really am. You know, I'm interested yeah. to see how we get treated in San Diego, too. Oh, yeah. Well, last year I was at San Diego. Nothing. Okay. I've been doing shows. So, like I said, Lopez, you're hanging with me, pal. We're going to go out. We're going to have a good We're going to have We're going to get you a drink, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's Jay now. So I guess. <laughs> Anyway, well, so this is like, a, this. Oh, we got T-shirts too, or are those shirt, regular? Those are T-shirts. Nope, T-shirt all all over. You know, three D printed T-shirt, challenge coins, of course. Oh, I'm and thinking of doing challenge coins on my next campaign. It seems like people really dig those. I really like them. I think they're cool. Me too. When's your next campaign launch? Uh, September. Oh, you won't have them for San Diego then. No, but I will have my second printing of Wraith, uh, Wraith of God. The Blood Hunters won't be out till what's. Well, I won't be done with it till August, so I'm not going to have those in San Diego either. I'll still be pushing the campaign, but I will have the second printings of the uh, of the first issue there, along with prints and T-shirts and hats and shot glasses and you know original art. So yeah, excellent. Yeah, you're going to have a lot. We're, we're going to have, have plenty of stuff. We're going to have a good. What's your boot number? Uh, Forty-seven oh six. Oh my god. See, you're like down in the middle. I'm all the way at the end with the artists. Yeah. You're like down there with like the publishing companies and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, because I've always been a publisher set up there. Right. So, but you yeah, got a nice location. You're right there in the middle and yep. easy access. Yeah, I'll tell you my plans when I see you for next year. Okay. About that. Yeah. Um, we also have, uh, if anybody, the Omnibus. So we have, I think, 50 of the original Omnibuses that people got in the campaign the first time. And again, that this is a 500 page book, the new one's 240 pages. 
but the new one is two is going to be is going to retail for ninety nine dollars. This okay. one retails for ninety nine dollars, but we offered it to people the first time for only sixty, just like this right. one is only right. six bucks. So you save yourself forty dollars, and that's all. That's it. You know, that's a campaign. That's, uh, I like it, and it's rolling along right. Uh, you this will. Uh... We got 22 days left. That'll go into demand, of course. Yep, but you don't yep. leave them in demand too long. As soon as they go to press, you kind of take them down and move on to the next one. Yeah, right? we're hoping in, in, by the end of these 22 days, this book will be at the printer. Because I everything's got, you know, I'm just putting everything together. You know what's holding me up is bios. None of these people are sending me their bios. Oh, yeah, I'll get it to you. So now I have, I'm writing their bios. You're just making stuff up. Oh, yeah. Like, totally. Like, yeah. Like, you know, Jay Lee. You know, Jay Lee was from a planet that was. You know, <laughs> not to explode, and his parents put him in a rocket ship. And sent him. <laughs> it's very similar to something I've heard before. But, yeah, wasn't that funny? You know. that, yeah, that was um, who who's I who's I? Oh, it was Shane. That's what Shane wanted to do was have, you know, to, to uh, do a comic book about some dog in the DC universe or Marvel universe, and he goes around meeting all these other aliens. But all his 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 origin story is all like the DC comics superhero stories and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, I got to steal that, Dale. I mean, Dale, uh, Shane, I'm going to steal that. Well, well I, want to, I want to let everybody know, we'll be revisiting this later in the show, but I want everybody to know that the uh, the link to this campaign is in the description of this video. So if you're even watching this in reruns, you can hit that link. It'll take you right here to the She, uh, uh, the Holy 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 Omnibus Edition. Yeah. So, yeah, and, so, and at 70, at 70 grand, everyone's going to, we're going to get the, the Presetta wraparound cover. And then at 75 grand, they get the sewn in satin bookmark. And I want to get past 75 grand because I have all these great trading cards I want to do of, you know, all the black and white original art, all the, you know, all the original art. I want to do trading cards because most of that, that art's never been seen before. And even in the That'd original, cool. well, let me get, let me grab it, send me out, can show you what I'm talking about. Hang on, Aaron. I'm hanging. I'm, I'm hanging. hanging. I don't know what to do on my own show. It's not true. I could talk forever. Um, Brian suddenly old says, Billy, you need to hook up Aaron with your t-shirt guy. Those wraparounds are sweet. Uh, we're all using, I think, are you using St. Clair's? No, I'm not. Nope. Oh, Debbie, okay. uh, Debbie's using somebody else. So okay. here's the, here's the original Sunry Aqua book. So here okay. is, uh, this is no, Dan Jurgens, right? So here's Dan Jurgens' piece. So as you see in the original Sunry Aku, it had all this caption boxes over it. Right. Now that won't be like that. Now all the caption boxes will be on one page. So it'll be on this page will be the caption boxes. This page will be a dedicated bio, uh, artist bio with a piece of she art or art that no one's ever seen before. And then when you flip the page will be Dan's original black and white art. And then you flip the page again, it'll be the original color art without any of this text unencumbering any of the art now. So you see the art oh, as cool. the artist originally intended to do it. I guess I'm going to have to order one of these. Oh, well, please talk me into it. What a salesman you are. No, oh, thank you. See, and, and, and again, the book's oversized now. So here's an original graphic novel size. Mm -hmm. And the, the book is now oversized. So it's going to be. Uh... That was our first stretch goal was to make it oversized. And it, and it was. So thank you all for that. Well, so it's going to be the same size as your first omnibus then. Yep, which perfect. makes sense, yep. right? Because, yep. you know, be able to put them together on the, the bookshelf and they, you know. A perfect Excellent. companion, if you will. <clears throat> I like it. Yeah. So, so that's that. So thanks. So we're closing in on it. You know, hopefully we can get it this week. We can get to seventy. Then I can get to seventy-five with the sewn in ribbon, and then I can start doing all the fun perks and getting everybody their, uh, you know, their uh, their their trading cards, magnets, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Well, that's fantastic, Billy. And I want to take a moment here to to plug my stuff. Um, you know. <clears throat> I don't want to start up this whole Aaron versus Rini thing, but uh, oh. she's she's killing me right now. You guys, you gotta you gotta spread the word and help me uh, help me uh, try and catch her here before we close out. Uh, we still got a little bit of time yet, but I have done. Uh, I'm finished with the nightclub story, which is one of the backup stories, of course. And um, <clears throat> Kelsey Shannon, our own Kelsey Shannon, is. Uh, is inking that story. And I'm working on the garbage man story, which is another backup story. This is a hundred pages folks for 25 bucks. You can't go wrong. Wow. Uh, here's wow. a beautiful trading card of Kit Carter. There's also a Kit Carter story in here. Uh, there's Dan Lawless's card that everybody gets. These are cards that everybody gets just for backing. Um, 
This is our uh, art contest winner, Adam Miller. This will be a pinup in the book. I've decided to put it in the book rather than make it a tiny little trading card. Um, there, of course, is the Bisley cover. That's one cover option. My wraparound cover. Uh, the Tales of Suspense tribute cover. And, of course, the uh, Tomb of Dracula number one uh, tribute cover there. So you have four cover options. We've got some nice color pages in here um, showing the vampire. Uh, here's some of the Garbage Man pages with uh, Dan Lawless coloring on it. Uh, he's working on, well, he will be working on page six. I think he has the first five colored uh, as soon as I send him. I just finished page six. It's a big old splash page with a bunch of cool stuff on it. Can't tell you, of course, because it's spoilers. But he'd be working on that soon enough. Now, look at this. This is um, this is the nightclub story inked by uh, a top professional inker that I won't reveal his name quite yet. Oh. And... Uh, Kelsey Shannon's inking these babies or coloring these. So this story is being colored uh, right now. And then of course there's the Kit Carter stuff. Now the Kit Carter story is 15 pages of what is basically a Sunday newspaper strip. Each episode is like, a, is formatted kind of like a, it's comic book page size, but it's actually formatted like a story wise, like a, a Sunday newspaper would be. So you've kind of got the setup and the joke at the end, but it's part of a larger continuity. So that's how it'll be presented in this, um, because these were meant to be online strips uh, when I first created Kit Carter. <clears throat> when I do the Kit Carter graphic novel, it'll be regular, you know, a regular comic book story. It won't be done like a newspaper strip like these are that'll be in the, the Wraith of God book. Uh, there's the Garbage Man print battling the uh, pumpkin heads. Uh, the Aaron, Wraith of God. Wait, yeah. Aaron, I'm sorry. What is a Kit Carter storyline? Who is Kit Carter? Kit Carter is a galactic ranger. She works for the uh, uh, this basically this intergalactic police squad that sort of like you know manage the crime control in the universe. Her partner is Merv the Astro Chimp, <laughs> and uh, they go around and battling things like the Astro Zombies and different threats that come up on different planets. It's a humorous strip, humorous adventure strip. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of the shtick there. Um, now, Wraith of God, this this is the Ruffs Volume 2. Now, Ruffs Volume 1 came with the first campaign or was available through the camp, first campaign. This is layouts and stuff to my pages for the book. So this kind of gets you a behind-the-scenes look. At, and it's only $15, and they're signed and numbered, 48 pages of the best layouts from the book. And you can actually look at the layout and go, oh, this is a layout to page 22, and look in the actual book and see how what it started out and how it ended up finished. <laughs> and so these are signed and numbered limited edition books. So I only print to the orders. So if there's like 200 orders, I might print 250 copies just to have some extras in case things get damaged or whatever. But they're all signed and numbered limited edition plus. So they're a collector's item, but they're also a great tool for kind of looking at the process of doing a comic book page, or at least how I would do it. Um, uh, for this book. So I love them. Uh, did you sell your roughs? Do you throw a few roughs up there on the campaign itself? Yeah, they come in. I put them up in a big bundle. Someone can buy it and it already sold, but I, uh, everybody, the person that bought it gets every single rough that I've done for the book or the campaign. So it ends up being probably a hundred sheets of roughs and layouts and, or, you know, between 50 and a hundred, it just depends. Um, but they get all the roughs. And if I do like a cover and I abandon that cover and do something different or redraw it, they get that, you know, the roughs, everything that uh, goes into the art of the campaign. So um, this is your early sign up Merv the Astro Chimp a trading card. Um, so anyway, we've got, and we got hats and we've got trade paperbacks and we got shot glasses and that's all the original art, but it's all been sold. But there will be more because one of the stretch goals is a playing card. A mm -hmm. Esther Queen of Hearts playing card. Now, in the last campaign, we had a Wraith of God uh, Ace of Spades playing card. This will be the Queen of Hearts Esther playing card. So that will that's a that is a stretch goal that has already been reached. So everybody will be getting one of those. But also have the original art is going to go up on this campaign uh, once I get the card colored. The art's done. It's black and white. I haven't colored it yet though. So. Excellent. But anyway, the link to the, um, this campaign is in the description of this video. So both mine and Billy's campaign, you'll be able to access very easily. Uh, remember, help me defeat the evil of Rini yes. and uh, catch back up with her.
So, uh, you know, I, I, I uh, uh, sent uh, Remy a um, uh, direct message in Twitter mm -hmm. uh, asking, see, Remy, are you coming to, you know, the, the uh, Heroes Con? She didn't get back to me. This is days now. That's what I'm talking about. How rude. How, rude, how crash. You, you have a little bit of success. You turn into a snob. Doesn't nope. want to hang around with the guys anymore. That's just how it is. Okay. And, and, and you know what? Two could play that game. That's right. <clears throat> All right, Billy, I do, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever watched the show or not. I know you'll lie and say you have, but I haven't. It's Sunday nights. I, I, I haven't, but I am home for the this weekend for the, which is well, amazing. I do a lot of different segments on the show. One of them is Aaron's top five. Oh, and uh, so this we can get your commentary on this as well. But oh, um, and Billy, and Billy, so Billy can partake in in your. Uh... Well, I will explain my top five, and you can certainly comment as I go along on whether you agree or disagree with uh, my choices here. Oh, but I let me run it. the little promo. Oh. Now. Yeah. I have, I have, instead of just doing my top five comic book artists, I've sort of broken it down into categories, like my top five storytellers, my top five illustrators who work in comics. My, this will be my top five golden age comic artists. Now the criteria for this is guys, they had to do a, a, at least a significant amount of work in the forties because guys like Frazetta and a lot of the EC guys really didn't do that much or any in the forties. They were pretty much prominent in the fifties only. So I didn't count them. These are guys that did prominent work in the 40s. They also did it in the 50s and into the 60s, some of them, but they had to have started and done a significant amount of work in the 40s for me to count them in this category. So I just want to preface that. Oh, hang on a second here now. <clears throat> Paul Taylor, $10 Canadian. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Now, Paul is our resident biologist. He usually comes for the cryptid videos uh, and gives me his scientific comment on the uh, Bigfoot videos I show. Hail and good evening to Aaron and Billy. Isles suck. Leafs rule. Glad you guys' campaigns are going well. So he's saying the Islanders suck and the Maple Leaves rule. That's what he's basically saying. That's a shot at you, isn't it, Billy? Uh, you've got you're muted yourself. Yeah, I, I, I uh, thank you for the super chat, uh, Paul. But I'm I'm kind of perplexed by that since the Toronto Maple Leafs have not won a championship since Lyndon Johnson was president. <laughs> <of that season. laughs> there, hey, enough said, right? Mic drop. Upset. There it is. I was even born the last time the Leafs won the fucking championship, <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't young. <laughs> Lord Lopez. Look at that evil one. You do what Aaron says, Billy. That's right. On my <laughs> show, you got to do what I say. Um, all right. So people gave me crap for not having like intro numbers for the last time I did top five. So I fixed that problem. So I will say at number five. So there's my intro to did number five. Huh? Did you find that or did you make that? Oh, I made it. It's it, this iMovie. It's just, you know, some crappy stuff that came with the program. All right. Now, this was difficult for me because there, there was a more good Golden Age artist than you might think. Uh, there was also a lot of crappy ones. But this guy, I, I was always sort of torn on. I like some of his stuff and some of his stuff I didn't like. But I, I, I went back and kind of looked at this carefully over this past week. And I said, you know what? I'm putting him in here at number five. And that is, of course... Lou Fine. Mm, yes, love Lou Fine. Love Lou. Well, Lou Fine. If you look at the hands, look at the hands on these characters. I mean, these are there's some really nice stuff going on here. But Lou, his anatomy at times was a bit funky. And that's what kind of threw me when I was younger. But at the same time, he had sort of a really, really appealing style to his work. And uh that's what made him such a fan favorite over the years and the decades. And people still look back and say, oh, he was one of the golden age greats. Um, yeah. But take a look at this. Not take bad. A look at this. Getting paid 50 cents a page, too. I mean, well, on. take a look at this page. This is Lou Fine here doing the um, the Ray. Look at look at yeah. the uh, look at the layouts here and how he broke the panel. Look at those yeah. planes. Those are great. This is very un golden age too this is like yeah. 70s a, stuff 80s it's stuff. almost neil adams-esque and yeah. some of the this layout look at that figure right there where he's punching this guy and 
And then look at how he he uses the close up and it they kind of bridges over into this yeah. panel. Yeah, I agree. Look at this kid's goofy face. I love it. The He's panel. very expressive. Yeah, I mean, you look at you look at um with Miss Fury. If you look at uh Carpe Mills, a lot of hers, you know, that six panel grid and all those same mm -hmm. six panels with the exact same size. Yeah. But so. to find something creative to do in him, like he's clearly doing here, uh, you know, it, it definitely is better than what the average stuff you were seeing at that that period of time. Yeah, incredible. Um, but check this out. I got he's the only one I've got three examples of just because his stuff is so funky that I think we need to uh, see it and it's all its glory. Now, look at this. Look at this figure work here. I mean, that is just a crazy yeah. uh, angle and. But it, there's something really sort of cool. And look at that hand. You know, look at this hand right here. Yeah. I mean, this stuff, this is really well done. It's just yeah. a really unique and unusual choice. Look at the bend in the leg. I love this. Um, so I, he was a guy, like I said, I was kind of back and forth on, but I, I, I kind of, and looking back on it now, I kind of appreciate it a lot more than I did initially when I was younger, because the younger I was very much into structure and everything had to look exactly right. You know, it's kind of like, this is kind of like the McFarland of his day, you know? Yeah. I uh, love it. Love just, it. Yeah. So we're going to go with Lou fine at number five. I think everybody's uh, what did Craig Smith says it was Craig Smith. The second say, hello guys. I think Vegas is going to win the cup. Also with Mrs. Lopresti's favorite NBA player out of the playoffs. <laughs> I think Denver will win the NBA finals. She's referring to, he's referring to LeBron, I think, but I agree with you, Mr. Smith. I think, that I think the, Denver's got this thing locked up. Well, they're three, one, no one's ever come back from a three, one, a three, one deficit. Ever? I don't think so. I don't think ever so. Ever in NBA finals. No, I don't believe oh, really? so. <laughs> so I think this is, this is done. Um, okay. So Billy, that's number five. I, I, I like your choice. Old chunk. Okay. All right. Well, then let's go and take a look at. I guess I need a voice that says number four. How does he do these? Oh, my goodness. Funny. All right, here we go. Wonderful. <laughs> this guy is. Uh, I just can't get over how good his figure work is. Mm. Uh, this is CC Beck. And I will admit that I'm picking my Golden Age artists based on how well they draw. I mean, I just am. And um, because there really wasn't, other than Eisner, there really wasn't any sort of unique and uh, in-depth or creative storytelling going on. It was very early in the process. People were still figuring that out with the exception of Eisner, who just blew everybody away. Right. But So I don't really use storytelling as a way to grade the quality of a comic book artist in the golden age. Uh, but I do focus on their drawing ability because there was a lot of guys during that period of time that were not particularly good. They were all very young looking to start off in art so they could branch off and do newspaper strips and commercial art where the money was. And so you had a lot of guys that weren't all that good working in the early stages of the golden age, but there were a few guys that could really bring it. And CC Beck was one of them. Look at that figure work, Billy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's per, it's great. It's right on the money. It shows his power. You know what I yeah. mean? It's, it's different than fines with the Ray. You know, I mean, look at it. He, he's just. He's thick. Yep. He's powerful. He really uh, just. Uh, I love CC Beck stuff. And let me show you another uh, cover he did for. Uh, this actually is nice. A nice scan here. I don't know. looks like someone might have juiced it up a little bit, but that's all right. As long as it's clear. Um, this, I think, was. Uh, wow issue number seven or something, but I look at that train. Look how cool that train is. It's like this futuristic kind of like Disney esque train without yeah. the grooming. And, uh, I think that's captain. Is that captain Nat Nazi there sitting on the, it looks, front like, of that train? It looks like one of them Nazis right there. I think that. it is captain Nazi, but anyway, so yeah, this is, uh, what year was that? 19. It says, does that say 78 at the bottom? It's I bet this is a re I think this is a recreation of the original cover because the original cover was uh, that's why it looks so clean. Yeah. Is Cause it's a recreation. Right. But this, this is almost exactly the same in every way as that cover to number seven. And I mean, just the perspective. And once again, the figure work is so freaking solid. I just, you just didn't see that kind of professionalism 
in early golden age books. And so yeah, because it was, it was such a job. Remember they weren't fans. And no, you know, there wasn't just, anything to be fans of except yeah, maybe right. newspaper strips in the polls. Mm -hmm. And it was like embarrassing for them and they weren't getting paid a lot too. Mm -hmm. you know, what was their page rate rate back then? Are they, are you talking a buck a page, $2 a page? I think it was a little Never. bit better than that, but it was probably like maybe, you know, $10, $5, $10, something like that. I don't like know, that. man. Well, you know, people, you made 50 bucks, you know, people would make $50 a month. Yeah. Live off of that. So yeah. I wonder what but it wasn't was. good. It wasn't good pay. No, of course not. But it was, you know, and a lot of these guys like Lou Fine, Marcus Killigrew pointed out in the chat, Lou Fine worked in uh, Eisner's studio and all the guys that were in Eisner's studio you know, like Jack Cole and these other guys were really good artists. So um, I don't, Beck wasn't, I don't believe was ever in Eisner's studio, but, you know, tremendous work, man, just yeah. tremendous work. And they had so, to get him out. They had to get him out. Yep. That, that was the thing. It was like, page. right. It was, you know, it was a, it was a paycheck. Yeah. yeah and really they, they, they did these things as fast as they could. Yeah, they, Cause they, they usually had to, right. They're, they're pencing at least two pages a day. Correct. I would guess, Maybe if more? not more in some yeah. cases, you know. Now, I know some of the guys that were really good, uh, you know, took a little bit more time and that time. Like anything else, you know, if you were doing exceptional work, you know, maybe they would put you in an art director position where you didn't have to crank stuff out. Certain guys were just doing covers and not the interiors, things like that. Um, and they were making pretty decent money. In fact, one of those guys we'll get to in a minute and I'll tell his story, but... Uh, let's take a look at number three on my list. Boom. Okay. It is, of course. Now, this guy was number one on my all-time storytellers. But taking into consideration everything, I'm putting him at number three oh right God. now for wow. well, just as an artist. I now, think this I is Eisner. I think now are these comic strips or just comic books? This is comic books. Okay. Because he also did a, 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 a spirit newspaper strip as well. Okay. Um, but he started working earlier than I thought he did. He was in, he was doing uh, stuff in 1946 is when he started. Uh, so that puts him firmly just a year after the war. So I still count that as pretty solid uh, uh, golden age contributions. So, yeah. His spirit comic. Then, of course, he, like I said, he was doing the newspaper strip, but he was best known for his storytelling. But the guy could also draw. Oh, he, yeah. He was clearly more talented than 90 percent of the people working in the industry at that time. Now, here's an interior page to kind of emphasize not only his storytelling, but how how well of an artist, of a craftsman he was or draftsman. Excuse me. There we go. So this yeah. is a spirit page. But check out this opening shot right here. We're like, it's almost like Citizen Kane-ish, right? Or, you know, you're looking in the, you're setting up the scene outside the window, looking in to see the spirit talking to, uh, I don't know who that is. Maybe that's Pigel. And then down here, you've got uh, Commissioner Dolan at the front door of the house. So you're getting like these two scenes at the same time. That Very nice. Doesn't work. It doesn't really work though. That first panel is really awkward because look where the wall would be of that house and look at her. Well, this could be an extended part to the uh, house. Yeah, could, could, I don't think you're full Billy's not buying it, but I do like the idea that you're, you've got two scenes playing out at the same time mm. uh, visually, right? Yep. And uh, let's see. There we got the old lady here talking to Commissioner Dolan. Do, do, do. And I just think like this guy's expression and, and the drawing and, you know, the, the drapes and the clothing he goes into a silhouette down here. Faces are good. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I just, you know, I think Eisner was clearly, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, I'm overstating the obvious saying he was one of the best artists of the golden age, but not only as a storyteller, but also just as a draftsman. So he makes the list at number three, Billy. And of course, of course, it's just my personal opinion. You know, I like, I like where you're going with this. Now, for some reason, I did not download my number two. I got number one, but I don't, I have number, I have four, five, but I don't have, I have three, four, five, but where's two? I don't know. Anyway, so let's just pretend I'm holding up two. Da da dun, da da dun, da da dun. So here hey, we go. Hey, number, hey, 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 hey. Huh? Oh. There you go. At number two. Now, this is maybe my favorite golden age artist. I put it number two. 
Well, why number two then? Oh, because you don't think he's the best. Right. I'm trying he's to be favorite. Yeah, I'm trying to be objective here. But he's like my favorite. Of 1984 Streets of Fire, probably one of your favorite films of all time, but definitely not one of the best films of all time. Exactly. There right. you go. Uh, Reed Crandall. Mm. And he was out of Eisner's studio. Um, I have this comic, actually, Billy. Do you know that? That's how patriotic I am. I have this comic. Here, here, my friend. In fact, I have several issues of National Comics and all with Reed Crandall covers because I loved him as an artist. Now, he was best known for his work on Black Hawk, which was a military comic about this team of airmen. You're familiar with Black Hawk, aren't you, Billy? Of course. Okay. Reed Crandall did a buttload of those, and uh, that's what he's best known for. But uh, I've always liked Uncle Sam. He was my favorite Golden Age character, and I just felt like the uh, the drawing was terrific. Look at the look at the wrinkles and the sleeves and the you know the figure that. work. The faces are good, um, you know, really good looking stuff. Love it. And here's here's another. Now this is a this he did a few years later because that that Uncle Sam cover I believe was 1942. Mm. That and uh, so it was right during the war, of course. Now, this is this is work he did for EC in the 50s. But he worked on the books that nobody read for uh, mm. EC, which were the piracy books or, um, you know, the the uh, the adventure books that EC put out. Everybody read the horror stuff in Mad Magazine, but uh, he's kind of died mm. on the line. But. Some of the artwork in them is fantastic. And you can see by the line work on this cover and the figure work. It's just really, really nice stuff. Um, Reed Gorgeous. Grant incredibly... That's astonishing. Look at that. Yeah. He was incredibly flexible in terms of subject matter. And um, uh, he's one of the guys I, I seek out, um, you know, for Golden Age art and Golden Age. I can't have any of the original art because it's too freaking expensive, but if you can find any pieces, but I do search out the comics that he drew because he was that good. Now, now how much is um, something like that going for? If you have a cover that has, it's a cover, but you're talking about piracy, the yeah, comic piracy. book or the artwork, the artwork. Well, I'll tell you this. He did an uncle Sam cover. And I, this was, wow, probably, probably 20 years ago now that an art dealer at San Diego had, on one of the national comics, Uncle Sam covers, not the one I showed, but it's Uncle Sam marching forward. And there's like a couple of doughboys. Was that what they call it? Was that World War One or World War Two? The doughboys. World War One. GIs is World War Two. Okay, so a couple of the GIs behind him, <clears throat> and like you know, a couple Army guys, a couple Navy guys. Anyway, marching towards the camera, and uh, it's by Reed Crandall. This art dealer, and this was twice up because in Golden Age they usually did wow. you know basically twice the size of the artwork we do now. And they had this original in San Diego, and this was again 20 years ago. So you figure it was 20 grand. I know that piece too. I know that cover. And it would have been, uh, I would guess now that something like that would be probably 100,000. Oh my. Or more. God. That would wow. be my guess. Why didn't you buy it, Aaron? You had that kind of cash. I did not have that. I was not having she uh, numbers like you were. You probably had that money, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't I believe me, huh? What's the, well, what's the most you made at a San Diego, if that was your biggest show? San Diego is always our biggest show, but what's the most you I'm had? embarrassed to say it's not that much. Really? Yeah, less than 10000 Wow. Significantly less than 10000 hmm. Our Our biggest year, I think we made $40,000. Jeez. Cash. It was cash. Oh my gosh. And, and so the thing. You, how much of that did you report? Oh, I don't know. I remember. <laughs> all of it. Of course, Aaron. All of, of it. Of course, all of it. Of course you, you did. did. But here's the thing is that when it rains, it pours. So then we made all this money. My mom had come with me and she wanted to go to Las Vegas to gamble, you know, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, there it is. Yep. That's the and cover. Then, That's yep. the original art the guy had for. So I sent my mother to I so I'm like, yeah, sure, Ma, you go, you know, one of her friends was 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 uh gonna be there too, some woman. Well uh so I said, Yeah, sure, go. So my mother went 
Oh, no, no. My nephew went with her. I'm sorry. So my mother, my nephew came with me to San Diego. Then my mother wanted to go to Vegas. And she's like, I'll take Vincent with me, who's probably 16 at the time. And I'm like, yeah, sure, go play the slots. And my mother goes plays the slots in Vegas, in Vegas, and she hits a jackpot, and she wins twenty grand. <laughs> oh my God. This is us oh. being poor for so long, you know, or <laughs> you know, lower middle class, and like, like, holy shit, when it rains, it pours, you know. That's yep. just, you know, and she's been trying to get that twenty grand back at every casino she goes to since. So she's probably spent seventy thousand dollars trying to get that twenty. You know, trying that's to how they do it, right? Yeah. You hit yep. once, and then yep. you're you're screwed for life. Yep. Uh, Byron Smith says, "I see a lot of Crandall in that Lo Lopez kid's mm. work." Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. Green Ledger says, "Aaron, do you know about this collection?" I might. I have to go check my books and see if I have it or not. If I don't, I will use this link and go check it out. Thank you, Green Laser. Appreciate that. Um, twenty k. Damn. Yeah, I never, I never had like huge years like some of the guys did in the nineties. I, uh, I did have good royalty years, but they were never, you know, the the most I think I ever made was uh, one hundred and like twenty five thousand, and sixty thousand of that was royalties. So I actually only made like sixty thousand dollars actually drawing comics. Right. So well, all right, you're publishing your own stuff there, buddy. That's right. Um, your own. You're master of your own domain. That's right. Okay, here we do. I do have a number one, so let's roll the number one. Boom. All right, here it is. It's not going to be who people expect. Everybody's going to say, well, why isn't Jack Kirby on this list? And I'll get to it in a minute, why he's not on this list. But here's my number one Golden Age comic book artist. It is Mac Rayboy. Whoa! Did not and, see that coming. Okay, do tell. I actually do have this uh, comic book, by the way. Uh, Mac Rayboy was a great illustrator. Uh, he ended up doing, uh, like, he ended up being a studio guy himself. He, he, he went from a couple of different companies where they made him art director, and then he would, uh, you know, he'd do the covers, and then he would bring in other people who would sort of, like, try to mimic his style, right? Um but and he ended up doing a Flash Gordon newspaper strip as well, which, you know, back in the day that that's where the money was at. Yes. It was either commercial advertising or newspaper strips. So he actually did do a great number of uh, Flash Gordon newspaper strips um, for after um, what's his face? Um, dear Lord. Uh, who's the well, uh, not Williamson. Um Guys in the chat, help me out. Who was the guy that did the uh, Flash Gordon strips? Al uh, uh, Alex Raymond? Raymond. Thank you. Yeah. There it is. Alex Raymond. So he took over for Raymond, or I don't know if he took over exactly for Raymond, but he followed Raymond there not too long after that. And his newspaper stuff is, is incredible. Um, of course, they were, like I said, they were getting paid. And he yes. was getting paid pretty good money as well, um, you know, to do what he was doing on these Captain Marvel books and other books like the Green Llama and some other things that he was doing uh, because he was so good. And he had basically had his own studio of people, like I said, mimicking his style. Let's check out this interior page. This is from the Green Llama. So he had a comic. studio then. He had a studio. So that would allow him to yeah. work on the strips maybe. And then, so maybe that's not him. Could this be him? It could be this one of his studio. Might, well, I, I generally $2. trust, I generally trust the, uh, the price guide when they give the credit out okay, um, because they've done the research, but, um, and plus you can tell you guys like they're doing his style. They don't draw as well as he did. That's the thing. Right. But look how well this is drawn. And this is a 1942 ish 43 yeah. comic. Yeah. Look at this stuff in here. Look at these faces. And it looks like this has got some craft tint or something going on it. Um, or zip back here for this, these patterns back here in the gray. Just, oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, you didn't expect to see this kind of art in the 40s. Mm -mm. And um, like book illustrations. Yeah, this is Mac Rayboy, R A B O Y, Mac Rayboy. And Mac you, can Ray see, Boy. you can see his stuff on Captain Marvel Jr., that was kind of his thing. And then there was a book called The Green Llama, uh, which kind of was it's this guy up here. He's kind of a friendly guy with a, he was like a mystic, you know, he learned his magic or whatever from this mystic. And so he had a green cape, but he was a friendly dude. He mm. always was smiling. 
I guess that's how they, you know, they brought the kids in, right? They didn't want anything too menacing to scare the kids. They wanted the friendly, happy hero. Right. Um, not, but, not, unlike, not unlike yourself. That's right. I'm a friendly, happy hero. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's my number one. The reason I didn't put Kirby. Triple H. That's Sorry. right. The reason I didn't put Kirby on this list is because Kirby was, I didn't, from in me personally, I thought Kirby was solid in the golden age, but he didn't really find his niche until the silver age when he was, you know, started doing the Marvel stuff. And then he really became who he became. I think he was still a solid golden age artist, but he was still finding himself. Um, so I didn't put him on this list. I don't think he was as good an illustrator as any of these guys. And then also uh, one of the guys I looked at was Alex Schomburg. Mm. But Schomburg almost did exclusively covers and his interior work. I, I found some of it. And it was like, eh. but yeah. his covers were really, really good, but I didn't well, want to yeah, give it. Really so, yeah, they were really dynamic. Like he seemed like to be like a lunatic. I mean, there's so much going on. It would get a little messy and chaotic and crazy. Well, that's the thing. That's the problem with Schomburg's stuff is you, there's only a couple covers he did. And they're the ones that, that he, that you could separate are brilliant. But all this stuff was so busy, they all looked the same. Mm -hmm. It was the heroes, yes. the Human Torch, the Submariner in there destroying, you know, Japanese subs or Japanese ships. And it was just a million people everywhere. They were really cool, but it's hard to separate them. But yeah, even, yeah, even on the on the rack, I just wanted on the stands, and he was in such demand. Yes, forty. But he was good. Oh, yeah, but it was like if you. That's the thing, though. Like you figure one of his covers were out there each month. If you put all of his covers next to each other, then it becomes a busy mess. But if he's com you're comparing his cover to everybody else's, it probably stood out, right? Yeah, I agree. Agree. Now he did. Um, I'm going to pull it up here. Well, I he guess he, he, I'm sorry, I guess he would be one of the first artists that he was just doing primarily covers that people hired him because they wanted that Schomburg cover. Right. But that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. um, now, the uh, I'm really kind of disappointed because I found out later that he used to live 20 miles from me in a place called Newburgh, Oregon. And While it's you like, were living there? Yeah, but I didn't know it. Oh. And then he uh, and then he passed away. And I didn't find out about it till after he had died that he was. And I was like, that guy lived in Newburgh? Are you kidding me? I could have, like, invaded his home. And I guarantee you he, he would have... Uh... It's something I learned. If you would have called him and said, can I take you to lunch? I bet you if he was healthy, you know, yeah. I don't know how old he would have been, uh, uh, that he would have loved that. Yep. This is my favorite Schomburg cover. Now, this is this is one that works really, really well because you have the three big giant images of our heroes and then everybody else is tiny. So it's not as busy. I mean, there's still like all these Nazis and stuff here, but they're all like super tiny in the background. Mm -hmm. So you really get this sort of, uh, circular design element going here. And this is my favorite Schomburg cover uh, from all select number one um, comic book. That's out of my price range now, Billy, but uh, I would love to have it someday. How much but is this comic now? Depending on what condition you want it in. If you probably, if you like probably got like a, a mid grade copy of this, you're probably looking at 30 grand. Wow. And I'm sure they're all slab, right? Oh yeah. So um, you just want it for the collectability aspects of it. Well, I did miss my, but it's my favorite Golden Age cover too. So okay. I do, uh, oh my God, do like I it. But anyway, so those back are back to God, everyone. So Aaron that's right. Can... Back in a lot, so Aaron can get that comic. Um, so anyway, those are my top five Golden Age. Now next week, I'm going to do my top five cover artists, comic book cover artists of all time, and then after that, I'll finally get to my top five comic book artists. Of all time. So anyway, those are the wow. things top, coming up top on Aaron's top comic, five. Top five comic book artists of all time. Yes. Taking into everything into consideration. You know, how well they draw, how well their storytelling is, how important they were to the industry, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So I've already done guys that I singled out as storytellers like Simonson and Frank Miller and Eisner. Of course, some guys make the list more than twice. I did top five illustrators that in comics were like Adam Hughes and Neil Adams and, um, you know, different guys like that. Right. Uh, so I'm, you know, but then I'm going to have my top five guys that I would say just as a comic book artist, just judging them as an artist 
drawing comics and what we expect to see from a comic book artist, I'll give you my top five. But that's two weeks wow. away still. Oh, so okay. Well, next weekend, um, yeah, because I want to tune in. I'll, I'll, I'll be home that weekend um, that, for your top five. But next weekend, I'll be in Charlotte. So, well, there you go. You should tune in. I will. Uh, tune in sure. Evil one for two dollars says, uh, "Thank God I grew up on Billy and Aaron's art instead." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're the golden age to you. So, uh, all right, you got a bunch of stuff you're scrolling on your screen. Do you want me to share anything, or are you just looking? No, I was trying to find your thing, but don't worry about it. I'm gonna turn it off. Sorry, I was. <laughs> I, I had something, and then I completely. Uh, we got it. And then I get lost and all my nephews and nieces are going to the proms and stuff. And I kind of, <laughs> I, I go down that rabbit hole. I have the best intentions I begin with and it's just, forget it. It's not going to, it's not going to. All right. Up. I've got this segment that I, I take a clip from an old television show or a movie or something from years gone by. And we take a look at it. And this was inspired by you. You'll see why in a, after you see the clip, but this is called uh, something I do every week called the uh, precious moments from yesteryear. Oh, and so uh, let's take a look at this uh, short video clip, Billy, and then we'll get your comments afterwards. All right. Man. How great is that? I know. Oh, 1949 it came out, right? And it's yep. 1948 when he's doing that. That's incredible. Yep. Mighty Dude. Joe Young, your favorite movie. Now, who was the actress that was in there with him? Terry Moore. Terry Moore. Yeah. Not to be confused with Terry Moore, the artist. Right. Never to be. But you know, now, I, I, the great thing about that scene was they're they're doing this big stage performance, right? And Mighty Joe Young is performing this thing with the strong man or whatever. Mm -hmm. But did you notice when he like when the 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 actor moved behind Mighty Joe Young and then he reached out and grabbed his leg and picked him up and then he was animated? That was a great little transition right there of going from a live action actor to the animated little figure that he was holding up over his head and he threw him. It really was. You know, but but if you look at when he throws it, it looks like there's spikes. I guess it was the grass on the stage. Oh, there was and, curtains. It was yeah, the curtain yeah, hanging right. down from the. And yeah. I'm like, oh my god, because I haven't seen it. Yet. <laughs> it's gonna get him pale, and that's why everybody wants to kill poor Joe. No, it's him on his butt. They, they had this thing where uh, the whole scene starts out where they bring him on stage, and he, they got this like this little these hills set up on stage, and there's like this little water pond between them. And he was going to have him do a tug of war. They had all these strong men on one side and mighty Joe is on the other. And he basically just pulls them all into the drink and the audience is out there. They're all at like dinner tables, laughing and cheering on. And then, uh, then I don't know if the fight, I'd have to go back and watch the movie again, but I don't know if that fight was part of the act or if the guy was like trying to, you know, now he got pissed off that Joe threw yeah. them all into the, so what triggered them? wanting to kill joe what happened I, I, i'd assume it's like king kong something happened in, in that scene i don't remember because remember I, it's been so long since i've seen it i gotta be honest with you i don't recall either but i remember they were after him at the end right and he was they were trying to get away and they, they had him in a truck or something and the cops were after him and all yeah. sorts of things uh maybe it was right after this scene you know he kind of lost his head and during the, the stage performance and mm. you know he is he is a big monkey you don't want him dr so running around uh hurting people but that's right there was a scene i almost showed where they first find him in africa and they've got this lion in a um he's like in a what do you call those little circus cages with wheels on them you know the that they would have the animals oh, yeah, the cart cage or whatever yeah whatever right so this lion is in this thing and mighty joe comes out and he's he's they got a real you know they they did a you know split screen well, not a split screen thing but it, where they they matted in the, the lion was real right. mm -hmm. and Mighty Joe Young is pounding on the cage and all this stuff. And he tips the thing over and rips it open. And then they, they have this short sequence where the lion is now animated. It jumps out of the, the carriage that he was in 
and then jumps behind the carriage and then they have the real lion running off again into the background as Mighty Joe Young then chases him off. It was really, again, and that's Harry Housen, well right? Done. Is that Willis O'Brien or is that Harry Housen? That was Harry Housen. That is Harry Housen. Okay. Yeah, Paul Taylor says the monkey went bananas. Oh, thank you. There you go. Oh, yeah, you got there it is. Ring that bell. <laughs> that was too good. <laughs> that joke's running the puck. I did the one with Debbie today and, and none of them got it. And I said, What <laughs> separates Ireland from Iceland? And she's like, What? I'm like, the sea. <laughs> and they're like, What are you talking about? Get it to sea. <laughs> <laughs> I get you the Irish Sea. That's what said. she's like. Yeah. Well, there's an R too that separates them. I'm like, yeah. Oh, you're just like, okay, no. forget it. Whatever. So, so Whatever you go. Just for that, I'm going to show like home movies of you in college. And yeah, yeah. Thank you. you. Right, to everybody. Yeah, exactly. So, um, anyway, let's uh, let's take a look at. Um, can you bring up your campaign again, if you would? Uh sure. Let, hang on, I close all that out. Let me. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. Did you see that dude getting electric? Do you ever watch Clips Go Hard on Twitter? Clips Go Hard? Yeah, Thierry turned it on to me. And it's just, there's a guy, and I don't know if he's in India, or oh, he's Turkish. I see the Turkish flag on the on the thing. And if I can share that too, that's more interesting than the campaign, if I may. <laughs> Yeah. What a salesman, ladies and gentlemen. I know, I know. I know. I try. I'm a terrible salesman. I'm a cartoonist, for goodness sakes. Oh. There we go. Look at this poor bastard. Okay, you can share that. Look at this. Oh, oh I saw that. Freaking <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> do, do, do. He hits the cable. Oh, oh my oh. God. He's got to be dead, right? No, I mean, he's fine. Oh, oh, is he? No, yeah, we're no. laughing. I feel bad. Oh, look at this dead. poor guy. Look at this. Oh, he got fried, man. <laughs> Boom. Party no, he's dead. He's de de that guy is dead. He's definitely dead. All right, let me go to my center reaction on the bus campaign. Oh, my gosh. I did see that. And I was like, Lord. why am I laughing at this? this I know. Horrible. I know. It's just terrible. Uh, Christine, Christina Lynn is stepping out. Good night, Christina. Oh, Thank you for joining you. us. Appreciate it. Thank you, honey. I'm sharing it now, old chum. Okay, let's take a let's take a look here again at uh, Billy's she uh, Senriaku on the bus edition. Yes. Uh, so, just a real quick refresher. You're going in and showing us all the uh, the original art that you had that you commissioned guys to do back in '94. Yeah, '95. Uh, 95, excuse mm -hmm. me. And so you got guys like Jim Lee. You got, uh, there's Jim Lee right now. Yep, Jim Lee, uh, Jay Lee. Jay Lee, got all the Lees in there. Stan Lee, no, Adam Hughes. <laughs> Adam Just Hughes, Joe, Joe Jusco. Mark Texiera. Oh my goodness. Like I said, it's a cornucopia of talent. You got Frazetta. You Frizetta, got Frizetta. Yeah, that, that guy. I got him. No, I, it's so many people. I, I have the names, you know, Stan Sakai. Casada, you know, Jeff Darrow. Jeff Darrow's piece is gorgeous. If I can Oh my that. gosh. Like how many artists do you have in here? Do you think? Uh, I think 34. Cause I did two of them. Wow. And, and 35, 35, uh, 35 but, artists. And yep. so we're going to get, you're going to get the layout and the finished work, right? Is that how you're doing it on every artist or is that That's just some of the, well, some of them, I don't have the layouts. Oh, okay. But, but the I ones you do, to. you're gonna show the layouts the to the I do, I'll piece. show. But let me show you some Jeff Darrow, good old Jeff Darrow stuff here. So here's Jeff Darrow's piece. And I'll share my screen if you give me a yeah, second. I want to see this. Uh, um, uh, stop screen. Yes. Then you bring up a new one and then I share um, it. Um uh, you know, I'm learning. Um, I'm a quick <laughs> study, my friend. Let me just do this so it's there. I'm gonna make it nice and big and old. Look at Justin's side says laughing at people electrocuting themselves to death. Is that a new low? I know it's I not. Know, we've, gotten, we've gotten a lot lower. All right, you can <laughs> see there. Uh, there you go. Look at that. So that's Jeff Darrow's piece. That's Jeff Darrow? Jeff Darrow. Look how great. That is so not busy I like I was expecting. Like, well, I'm, I can't. I, I, I'm afraid to put it on the campaign because look at the butt talks, my friend. Look yeah, at, yeah, you might get you might get a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so, but look at this. And Brian, so this art, this is some of the art that's that's gone. The art has disappeared, so it was recolored, and it is uh, hi-fi color and design uh, recolored. Mm. 
Nice. Look how great. Look at this. I mean, that is a great piece. And I never would have, I would never have picked that out as being Darrow. Yep. Just if you hadn't told me. I'd never and I had the original been. black and white on vellum. He would draw on vellum. Really? So it's just, just stunning. Stunning, stunning stuff. And my goodness, like I said, the butt. Not, uh, pretty racy for 1995, wouldn't you say? Well, I don't hey, know. Hey, that, yeah, maybe not. Prater Seven, thanks for joining us. Appreciate Let's it, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of a lot of fun people. A lot, of, you know. Again, these are all people that were friends of mine. Like I had not met you yet, Lopez. No. What's up with no. that? No, oh, that's not good. No, I don't know when we first. Uh, I don't know if we ever officially met. I think we just sort of oh, were aware of each that. other, then started talking like we were friends, even though we had never really. Uh, well, I remember I came up to you. I thought I had that Captain America pitch. Yeah, but we we had talked before then, though. That was yeah. the first time we ever spoke. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I can't remember the first time. Hmm. Especially uh, when anyway, well, when I say I don't remember the first time, I'm not, you know. Anyway. Um, so anyway, there is a uh, there is a link in the description of this video that will take you right to Billy's campaign, well, as well as my all. Wraith of God Blood Hunters. But now, Billy... Yes. Now, now is the time everyone's been waiting for. Your roast is done. No, it isn't. Not yet. Oh, okay. But, but this. That's right. We are about to not find Bigfoot. But uh, okay. I, this is where you get to give me your expertise. You're a hunter. Mm-hmm. You've been out in the woods many times. Many times. Okay. Well, first of all, have you ever seen Bigfoot at, all the time? You've been, never at, had a Bigfoot sighting. Never, never an encounter. Never an experience of any sort. Any. Never way. heard any strange noises. No, 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 no okay. not believe in it at all. Okay, so you're a, you're a, you're a non-believer in Bigfoot. Non-believer. Okay. Well, I am too because I'm just so cynical. I can't believe it, but I want to believe it, Billy. The creative side of me wants to believe it. So we continue our never ending search. But before we get to Bigfoot, let's take a look at this swamp creature photographed in Chile. See what you think of this. Okay. Um, I'm going to go big with it. I'm going to go big with this screen. I got a second here. Okay. I got to, uh, I got to share it. It's all about sharing. I'm going to go even bigger. I'm going to put it on my monitor here, my bigger monitor. Okay. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, oops. Get back here. I'm going to mute it so I don't get in trouble. Now let's take a look at it. It looks like it's this guy right here. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? In a Chilean lake. Well, it's definitely breathing air. Yeah. That was it? Well, come on. It looks like a, uh, They it never show like very much, Billy. The like more you see... A star or something. No. Like a... Like a it snouts up. I think it's a, when you say it's a gar? Probably. Yeah, I mean, those are. Snout? Would a snout those... is sticking up out of the water? That's what it looks like to me. And I don't believe this, Lopez. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just showing you what's out there. You don't have to believe it. I just want your critical analysis of what you're what seeing. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I think it's more than likely a big fish and not a dinosaur. I would probably guess that. And you love uh, dinosaurs. I do. I do. Uh, Paul Taylor says, Copy bear, that's like a copy bear is like a rodent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah They're like that's... a big rat. They're the world's largest rodents. Um, how could that be a copy? And then Paul Taylor's a biologist, he should know stuff. So, what's amazing too is that with that, all of the rats in comics that somebody would, that you would say that copy <laughs> bear is a big rat. <laughs> now, Citizen Ronan, he's a believer, he says that's clearly real. Well, I okay. think it's real. The question is, what is it, right? And, um, I'm guessing that it's a big. Who's that guy that always um, a river monsters? You ever watch that show? I have. Yeah. That guy. Now, see, I love that show because Jeremy he always Wade. catches something. Yes. I'm Jeremy Wade. He's a good fisherman. Yeah. He it's always you, catches something really, though. Yeah. Right. And it's usually what, what do you call him? A gooch? Those giant catfish. He always, it always ends up being like a gooch or something. What did you say you thought it was? I thought it was a gar, you know, the a gar. The yeah, he catches those too. With the long snouts, it looked like a snout was just sticking up out of the water. And it was, but what do I know? I don't know these things. Nomsky says a fisherman in Italy just caught the world's largest catfish this week, nine feet long. Wow. You know what else are 
freaky are is um a sturgeon and they can get huge yes yes in fact the story is now we have a lot of sturgeon out here in um, the columbia river right which separates oregon from washington and they built a dam there and when they were building the dam and they were down they, they sent scuba divers down to lay like the concrete foundation for the dam right so they're doing mm -hmm. all this underwater work and apparently they encountered and they they have because i've been to the bonneville dam and they have like huge sturgeon they have in like these fish ponds you can check out but they they're like bottom feeding giant catfish is what they're like they're but they can be like you know 15 feet long or 20 feet long i mean they're just enormous yes and and so they were down there you know laying the concrete and i guess scared the piss out of quite a few divers when they encountered these giant things just like sitting on the bottom of the, the Columbia River. Um, so I think I think sturgeon get a lot of those are the, a lot of the sea monsters people think they're seeing are these giant 20 foot bottom suckers that, you know, they 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 think, well, it's got to be, you know, a dragon or something. But it is. Well, yeah, if you even see um, th that a lot of the uh, the sea monsters, like from old engravings and stuff like that, right. the 17th century, when it, you know, the age of exploration, if you look at 16th, 17th, 18th mm -hmm. century engravings of what a sea monster is, it pretty much in the new world, if you will. Right. You know, there, but I, I'm sure there's sturgeons in, in Europe too, right? In the northern world. It's got to be. Now, uh, Maromi says River Monsters was canceled because he caught everything. <laughs> Very good. That's good. Very That's good. good. Uh, there we go. Um, are, are, are you, I can't remember, are you Sweden or Norway? I can't remember where he's from, but he's watching from across the pond in one of those uh, uh, Scandinavian countries. I, I can believe. tell by the lack of vowels in his name. Yes, exactly. He says, he says it's narwhal. He decided to take a bath. So that's possible. That's great. Um, you got fans from all over. All right. Nomsky says cat. So what, what did I, what did Nomsky say this was originally? Now he's clarifying what he said and I can't remember what he said. Um, oh, catfish probably. Okay. Um, Paul Taylor says, now he's a biologist, so he would know. He says, my brother caught a sturgeon once, took him a half hour to land it. And then he couldn't figure out what it was. Oh, my God. Well, they're protected now. I don't think you're allowed to. Uh, you can do catch and release because if you're fishing and you, you hook it, what are you going to do? But right. You know what? It's, you know, I think and Joe Rogan said this and I had to and talk to me about Lopez about this. We're talking about fish and aquatic animals and all. Mm -hmm. Dolphin have to be uh, and porpoises. They have to be among the, 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 sm the smartest Yes. animals on earth because you never heard anyone catch a fucking dolphin on a hook <laughs> right think about it no one's ever yeah, the only time the only time dolphins get caught is when they get hung up in fishermen's nets the nets when the nets just come the giant trawlers yeah. swoop them up right but and that's there's nothing he could do they're they're pursuing the fish and they get caught in the right. net die. but right seriously have you ever heard of anyone catching a fucking dolphin or any kind of porpoise on a no no, That's how did, look how smart they are. They see this, you know, chunk of meat, like, oh, that looks good. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is there a hook on the end yeah, of this? That line? Why is that string going up to that little? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. So that was our, that was our sea monster sighting, um, but nothing too uh, compelling. Now here I've got a three part Bigfoot video. Now this came out in two, was released in 2006. And it has caused controversy since then about people fighting about whether it's a hoax or it's the real deal. This is double lot six we're talking now. Yes. Okay. So it's been around a while and a lot of, uh, apparently a lot of controversy with it. Now this is, this is a three parter uh, because the, the video is so long at different stages. So I give them credit for actually, you know, it's more than just three seconds of blurry video. Uh, so we'll see what you think here. This guy is uh this looks. This first scene looks pretty much like a setup to me, but um, you be the judge, Billy. Hang on, uh, you ready? Yeah, I wait. I want to move. We got this on. guy here squatting in the. I don't know what he's doing, right? But watch behind him now. Okay. Nope. He starts to run because there he is. There's Bigfoot coming after him. Wait a minute. I, I got to go to my smaller screen because it's it's broken up. Well, this old, this is this slows it down so you can see it better here. The guy That's takes off running, without even looking, which makes me think, okay, this is a setup. Here comes Bigfoot. 
Nice big costume, though. I got to give him credit. Excellent costume. I like the hump on the back to make it more yeah. uh, like that. The neck. Remember, the head can't turn. Right. And and look, he's jumping down off this hillside. So he's he's an athletic Bigfoot, which I also like. He doesn't look like, you know, this uh, beer bellied guy walking, strolling through the woods. This is an action animal. Look at him go. Yeah, he's he no jumps down. A giant Bigfoot who could barely yeah. move at the time. And they're saying they're saying, well, no one could no normal human could jump down that far without injuring himself. And I'm like, shut up. It's on a it's on a slope. It's yeah, come on. Plus they could also, I mean, he jumps out of sight, does he not? So they could yeah. be, they could have put a mattress there. Yeah, I know there could have been anything. You're right. Okay, so here's part two of the video. So this guy got allegedly got chased, you know, wave and then they they as Bigfoot went on his way, they followed him. So we got some more footage here. Um let me bring it up. So now he's on the run through the woods and he's a little bit farther away here. Let me, uh, who's filming this and why is his friend filming him squatting down? Yeah, I see that exactly. But here we go. Okay. It's a little shaky here until they find, there he is in the woods. You see him mm -hmm. back there, uh, traveling at pretty good speed. So he's, uh, is he making any sounds, any howling sounds? No, they don't have any sound on the camera. That There's your last shot of him running right there. That's not too shabby right there. It looks a little bit like Garbage Man, this silhouette. Yeah, kind of a little. See, but I like the yeah. performance. I love okay? it. I think it's because great. the arms are swinging. He's jumping through the woods like an animal might be. I give him an A for effort on this one. All right. Well, the, I got, okay. I have to ask you, Aaron, the original, yeah. like, what is it, 1970, 16, like eight millimeter footage? 60, of yeah, 68 or 69. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The Gimlin, so the Gimlin film. Yes, the Gimlin around, which is also newer. Patterson, than, Gimlin, yeah. So this, the funny thing is, is about the Gimlin film footage, the first official sighting of Bigfoot on camera, right. it's still newer than the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs ever won the, the uh, Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Paul. He's turning, he's turning the knife in you. <laughs> that didn't even exist. The, oh my goodness! Oh my God! The, so Bigfoot is younger than the last time. Than, than, than yeah. The <laughs> all right. Here's part three. Yeah, here's okay. part three of this. Who's so, filming this? I love. Well, first of all, very nice knows? framing. I love the dramatic framing. Yeah. The 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 people they post these things without any information. They don't tell you where it's at, who they are. You know, it's. Uh... Okay. Here we go. There. See now, this one I like. See, look, he's running through the woods. The hair's flying. He's jumping over stuff. He's definitely a monkey on the move. So let's slow it down. Zoom in. Here we go. This is all part of the same encounter they had with this. So they're getting their money out of this guy's suit. Absolutely. 100%. I am totally convinced that Shelly and I could go out in the woods if I get a decent suit and I can create my own Bigfoot video and be an internet sensation. Look at him there. I think so too. Or we could just have RT Bear run around naked. That's right. Like, like a wild man in the yep. jungle, right? So there you go. I uh... okay, uh, Mr. Lopresti, Miss Lopresti, right there. Look at that, right there. Look at yeah, that. Oh, I like it. That's good. Now, what is that costume made of? Let's not, let's let's just let's just say if you were making a costume, uh -huh. would you get yak hair? What would you do? I mean, I would definitely would get, I would definitely not use synthetic hair because yeah, it's too definitely. obvious. You have to use something that looks like real animal hair. Musk ox, perhaps? Yes, perhaps. Musk ox perhaps. is also in North America as opposed to a yak, right? Isn't yak Asian? So you'd have to, the musk yeah. ox, you can get, you know, that, that you can go up there and have one of your buddies kill one of them up in Canada. <laughs> and you can buy it from it. You know, buy the cop, you, know, right. you know, I, I don't know. Are these protected? Will we get in trouble for like killing? No, you can hunt, no, you can hunt musk ox. It's it's a crazy hunt, but it's 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 sad too because they're not used to being hunted, and they're kind of easy uh, hunt because they actually will all almost like a wagon train that you know, like when the they they all put their butts all their heads out in a circle to protect themselves because they're so big. That if a polar bear comes or something like that, they could charge it, you know what I mean, with their horns and fend it, fend it off. So once they see the humans coming, they'll get in this defensive position. They don't run. They kind of stay. And then somebody shoots them.
Oh, well, so is that legal to shoot musk ops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. a, it's, it's, a, it's a tough hunt. It's tough to get. You got to get a lottery because they only give out so many tags a year unless you're uh, an Eskimo, you know, okay. unless you're a, a native. Uh, I think that they, I don't even know if they need tags. So they do population control with them like yeah. they do with alligators or whatever down yeah. south. Now, yeah. have you ever had the desire to go hunt an alligator? Yes, I, I think about doing that since I well since I ate alligator like this because uh -huh. I only yeah, shoot I, I only hunt uh, things we eat, um, but I'd love to go gator hunting absolutely. I'd love. Well, see, to. What you could do is you chop the head off and get the head stuffed. So you can yeah. use that as a trophy. I've got I got a big gator head right over here. I bought in New Orleans. Yeah, and uh, then you you eat the rest of it. I would yeah. assume. Right? Yeah, I'd love. Yeah, I'd love to go gator hunting. Um, I want to, uh, I'd like to go pig hunting. I've never gone pig hunting because the feral pigs are so. But they, they're they nasty, man. Yeah. You got to be careful with them. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, so I have family, uh, like Nomsky, if he's down in Florida, I, I would assume. <laughs> you know, a lot of family I have down in Florida. I'd like to move down there eventually. And then, you know. Get out and paying those New York taxes. Oh, my and... God, dude. You have no idea. And everyone we talked to, we had our American Legion meeting, uh, our county convention yesterday. And just everybody, we're all everyone I know is, except for in comics, agrees with everything you and I agree with. Like the insanity of the world, yeah. And, and you feel like you're talking to adults because you're talking to men. These are Vietnam veterans, stuff like that. Right, like, right. What the hell is going like, like just and you when you hear them explain it, you know, or, or from their point, you're like, yeah, what? I can't argue yeah. with you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, when like, you oh, when you talk to regular people that have regular jobs and have to exist in the real world, mm -hmm. it's amazing how different that conversation is by your from your artist friend who works in comics and lives in an apartment by himself and right. you know doesn't have any kids or anything. It, it's it's amazing the how how different those perspectives are on reality. Yeah, a hundred percent. And the thing too is that these are the same people though, and I'll hear it. I know it next weekend. Um, the ones that never had children will be the first ones to tell you what your, you, our children should be learning in school. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know, that's, that's the thing though. And that's the problem with this generation is that people w having kids, first of all, getting married. Okay. Well, a lot of these people don't even get married. They just shack up. Right. And yeah. they never get, they never make the commitment to get married. Nope. Nope. Once you get, once you get married and then once you have kids, it's this slow evolution from being I'm the most selfish person in the world to understanding what it is to live your life for somebody else and to have to take care of kids and raise them. And you're concerned about how they turn out and what kind of people you're making, taking care of your wife or whatever that situation may be. You totally, and, and when you don't have kids and you don't get married, or even if you get married and don't have kids, you never lose that sort of selfishness. Right. And I think that's an important thing when you have kids and I'm not saying everybody that doesn't have kids is selfish. I'm not saying that, but it does help you because artists have to be so self-centered to get to where you're at. It's like an actor or any of these things. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to be incredibly self-centered and self-driven. And if you don't have anything in your life that pulls you out of that to make you start, you know, giving to other people instead of just taking all the time, you don't, you don't change. It's really hard to change. Right. So, but they're also the ones though, then, who they're also they're very liberal, so they're all about the government, you know, do it being right. being selfish. Uh, they call us selfish, say, well, you know, and and well, the government should do could take care of this and do this and do that, and you know, they're all for the one for the this big money, these big spending, social programs, all this stuff, but they've never taken the responsibility or the sacrifice that we've done. Right. But it, you know, but it's okay for other people's, you know, to do it. Well, it it absolves it absolves the uh, people from having to actually like take care of that homeless person. Well, the government taxes me, they can do with them. I don't have to deal with it. And I can't tell you how many times I've been with other comic book people and I see a homeless person or something and I'll give them some money or something. And the liberal that's with me won't do it. They'll make a joke about it or whatever, because they want the government to take that responsibility. And they, they and it would, by giving the government that responsibility, it takes away your personal responsibility for taking care of your neighbor or helping your neighbor when you can. Right. So, Oh, my mother said the same thing, Paul. My mother would say the same thing. That's right. Why, uh, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Right. <laughs> Marcus Killigrew says hunt pythons in Florida. Oh, I'd love to, I'd love, I'd love to go hunting them suckers with a machete. Oh my gosh. That would, that would be creepy. Those are big snakes, man. Well, they, they have to be eradicated. 
they're so invasive. It's awful. Oh, wow. Awful. Well, what a show we've had tonight. That's going to wrap it up for us. I want to thank my good friend, Billy Tucci, for joining me. Thank we you, had brother. to get our little social political commentary there at the end because it inevitably comes up. But uh, thank you for joining me on this show. It was great fun, as it always is. You guys in the chat, thank you for the super chats. Thank you for joining us and participating because we could not do a show if you guys weren't part of it. And we just thank you so much for supporting the projects and also supporting our YouTube channels. Um, and I want to remind everybody once again that Billy's uh, new project, his She Omnibus, is the link is in the description of this video, along with Wraith of God Blood Hunters. You'll find the link in the description of this video as well. Uh, so please, if you can, back them if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much for supporting us so we can do this great stuff and uh, make you a part of it. So is, is the uh, is is the roast done? Uh, should be very close. I'm within two minutes, I think. All so. right. Excellent. Here we go. Great time. Everybody, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Be safe, and we will see you next time. Thanks, pal. See you on the, on the King.